And as the national anthem is concluded, the uh, flyby of the four jets zooming overhead at the present time. Just above us, and uh, they, they flew what they call the missing prisoner formation. Uh, one of the four jets immediately went into a, a climb and zoomed high above the other three as they zoomed off into the horizon. Well, we're about set. Who'd have thought we'd have been here seven weeks ago, huh? Game number 23 for the Dallas Cowboys, and Jim O'Brien, rookie place kicker for the Baltimore Colts, will kick it off. Cowboys have Mark Washington standing down to the goal line. And he is joined by Calvin Hill. There's the whistle, and Super Bowl V is underway from Miami. Here's Hill at the 10-yard line, fielding the short kickoff across the 20 to the 24. And he is dropped by number 40, Jack Maitland, of the Baltimore Colts. So the Cowboys will put the ball in play, first and 10 from their 24. First time we've seen Calvin Hill run back a kick in a while, Vern. They've used just about everybody back there. Dwayne Thomas, uh, Cliff Harris, Mark Washington, Calvin Hill. Uh, but this, as you said, the first time, and he got the ball. And Cowboys at 24, and with the win in their face. So rather, uh, well, I can't tell exactly. It's kind of a crosswind, so it shouldn't, again, be that much of a factor. Morton and Rucker both wide to the right side. First and 10, Dallas from its 24-yard line. Garrison and Thomas, the setbacks. Craig Morton feeding the ball to Walt Garrison. He's to the 26th for a pickup of two, stacked up by the right side of the Colts defensive line, Roy Hilton, number 85, over there to make the stop. That'll set up second and eight. Johnny Unitas on the sidelines, uh, loosening up his passing arm. Just underway, Super Bowl five in Miami. Hayes to the left side. Rucker wide to the right. The tight end, Mike Ditko, brought the play in, set inside Rucker. Second and eight from the 26, Morton is throwing. Good protection, short toss to Thomas. He's across the 30 to the 32-yard line. That'll set up third down, and the Cowboys will need a little less than three yards for the first down. And one of the factors there that uh, could be very, very important this afternoon against that Baltimore zone defense, throwing off to the back. This is one thing that Craig has been a bit of a set with himself this year, saying that he hasn't thrown to his backs enough to uh, Thomas and Garrison and Hill. Uh, it could be a vital factor this afternoon in the success of the Cowboy offense. Third down, call it two. Cowboys from their 32-yard line. Rucker wide to the right side. Hayes set inside Rucker. The fake to Thomas. Morton throwing, gets it away. Intended for Hayes. The pass is underthrown and almost intercepted. Hayes was behind Jerry Logan, but Morton had a big rush on him and he had to get rid of that football a bit earlier than he wanted to. It's fairly obvious that Craig audible to the line of scrimmage that time. Uh, the one thing you don't expect to do against Baltimore is go deep. But uh, Craig apparently saw the defense, read it well, and uh, actually Bobby had about a step on his man, but double coverage on Hayes and passes as he sent it under throne. Ron Gardeen, the number two punt returner in the AFC, is deep as Ron Woodby prepares to punt for the Cowboys. Good snap from Dave Manders. High kick, hangs it up there. Gardeen signaling for the fair catch. At the 26-yard line of Baltimore, and the Colts will put it in play from there. Eighty thousand plus on hand in Miami. Pretty well split as far as the uh, roar of the crowd is uh, concerned so far. I would have suspected that the Miami folks might have been partisan of the Cowboys because of the bitterness and the acquisition of Don Shula from Baltimore. But uh, the crowd seems 50-50. There's a lot of noise. I know that. Johnny United guiding the Baltimore Colts, first and 10 from their 26. Norm Bulash is one of the setbacks. It's big move from TCU taking the handoff. Moves it out to the 30 for a pickup of four. Sliding off the left side, Leroy Jordan making the stop along with Bob Lilly. Second and six. Frank Bulash uh, broke the first tackle that time. This has one of been, the been one of the factors in his success in coming on strong in the latter half of the season. He's uh, an exceptionally tough fellow to bring down, particularly with first contact. He does a good job of breaking those initial tackles. Kitten is wide to the left side. Bulash and Tom Nowatsky are the setbacks. Bulash again this time trying the right side. Herb Adderley is there and drops him behind the line. 
at the 25 for a loss of five on the play. It'll be third and 11. Adderley really moving up quick from the left corner position and forcing the play. Third down. Baltimore needs 11 for the first down. The Colts moving from their 25. 11.45 left in the first period. No score. Here is Super Bowl five in Miami. Eddie Hinton wide to the left side. Jefferson set inside Hinton. United, first pass of the day. Over the middle, completes the throw, but not nearly enough for the first down. The pass was completed to uh, John Mackey, the tight end at the 29-yard line for a pickup of four. It'll be fourth and seven, and a big cheer for the Cowboy defense. This excellent coverage on the near side of the field that time by both, both Mel Renzo and Cornell Green on Jefferson and uh, Ed Hitton, particularly Mel on Eddie Hitton. He gave him the bump and run tactic, and I think Hitton may have been the primary receiver, but there was no shot at it. David Lee is the coach punter. Good snap from center. Kick is a little bit low. Hayes at the 35. Dropped at the 37-yard line. Ron Gardine, number 30, making the stop. So the Cowboys' second opportunity of the uh, afternoon on uh, offense. As they'll move the ball from their 37-yard line. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh, boy, there's just nothing to float like the follow-through you get with the Valentine boat. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine, and Valentine's having the biggest boat show blast of 1971, featuring the new and exciting boat for the 70s. During Valentine Marine's Super Bowl boat show, you'll find dozens of tremendous money-saving specials on the greatest names in boating. Here's a typical super special you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aeroblast dry hull, 85-horse Johnson Dilly Trader, an incredibly low $2,492. That's right, only $24.92. We've got boats of every size and shape, all at boat show prices. But you've got to see them to believe them. The 71 fleet is in at Valentine Marine, and we've got a boat for every family and every budget. So what are you waiting for? Come on out. We've got the game tuned in. Don't miss the gigantic Super Bowl boat show going on right now at Valentine Marine. Free Cokes and coffee for everyone. Harry Hines via the Circle and 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open tonight for your convenience. Dwayne Thomas taking a big shot from Morton over the left side gets uh, short yardage. Officials uh, mark it at the line of scrimmage, so uh, caught a second and ten for the Cowboys from their 37. Following the punt a moment ago by David Lee of the Colts. Clock moving along with 10 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the opening period. No score. Hayes and Rucker both wide to the right side. On the delay, Thomas to the 40-yard line. Pick up of three, second to make it third down. Cowboys need seven for the first down from their 40. And Frank, it's been from that formation that uh, the Cowboys made most of their yardage on the ground last week against San Francisco. They used Hayes and Rucker to the wide side of the field and then sent Thomas to the short side. Uh, they had that same uh, position that time, but instead of the sweep, we saw Dwayne Thomas up the middle on delay. It's a, a variation of an old theme, so to speak. Rocker to the left side, Hayes to the right on third and seven from the 40-yard line. Pettis Norman now splits a couple yards to the right. Here's Morton throwing, being rushed, and Roy Hilton, number 85, has him. Well, apparently the receivers were covered. Nor uh, Morton had enough time, but just couldn't find anybody. And big Roy Hilton, number 85, pounced on him for a loss of three at the 37-yard line. So once again, the Cowboys will be forced to punt. It's been kind of a chess game so far with neither team able to do much offensively. Uh, of course, Baltimore's had just the one possession of the Cowboys' two, but we're seesawing between the 30. Ron Woodby punting for the Cowboys. Gets a good snap. Jerry Logan feels this one at the 25-yard line. Gets away from Richmond Flowers. Back across the 30 up to the 32, and I believe we have a flag down. 
D.D. Lewis, number uh, 50, finally made the stop for the Cowboys. See if we had a flag or if he was just throwing it to mark the, uh, the spot. Now the infraction uh, will go against Dallas from the Colts 32. And it is going to be a major penalty. The first one of the afternoon will give Baltimore a first down at the Colts 47-yard line. And Norm Schechter, the referee, giving the indication for personal foul against the Cowboys. So the Colts come up with good field position. Their second possession of the afternoon. They have yet to pick up a first down. Moving now from their 47-yard line is United. Under his center, Bill Curry awaiting for the snap. Unitas is throwing. Intended for Bullock, intercepted. Chuck Howley at the 30-yard line, returns it to the 40. Howley is to midfield, he is out of bounds at the 46-yard line of Baltimore. Well, that's why they've got Chuck Howley playing the weak side, because he is so good on pass defense, and that time uh, showing some of the old diving board stunts that he used to perform down at West Virginia. The old man is still agile because he caught the ball or tipped the ball, then had to tip it back up in the air and finally caught it on his way down about two feet above the ground. Uh, Dave Edwards ran over and tapped him on the backside and said, get up and run, boy, we've got the football. Cowboys in cold territory for the first time, moving now from the Baltimore 46. Rucker goes in motion to the right. The pitch is to Thomas. He's to the 45 to the 44-yard line. And pinned by Hilton. Along with Fred Miller, number 76. Pick up of a couple of yards, second and eight. They've run Dwayne Thomas to the left side twice now, once up the middle. And uh, I think one of the most obvious factors we've seen so far in the development of the game in the first half of the first quarter is a tremendous amount of keying being done on Dwayne. Baltimore's getting great pursuit, going where he goes. Cowboys moving with the wind here in the first period. 8.20 remaining. No score. Dallas second and eight from the 44 of Baltimore. Morton is throwing. Looking long. Fires it over the middle instead. It's incomplete. Walt Garrison was the intended receiver. He was well covered by a tackle out there, Fred Miller, at about the line of scrimmage. Frank, I've got to believe there was a busted play because over on the uh, near sideline, right in front of the Cowboy bench, Rayfield Wright and Dwayne Thomas standing there, and it looked as though it might have been a screen pass. Uh, I can't imagine why Rayfield would have been that far out in front of Thomas if it had not been, but uh, Rayfield was the only lineman out there, so the screen was not well set. Cowboys with a third and eight now from the Baltimore 44 on either side with uh, an ability thus far to do anything at all in offense. I can believe we're still looking for our first first down of the ball game by either club. And we're halfway through the first quarter. Dan Reed is in the ball game at running back. He goes wide to the right side as a flanker. Martin is throwing on third and eight. Zings it over the middle. It's incomplete as Bob Hayes tried to make a shoestring catch. Couldn't quite pull it down. And we have a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. That pass was a little low, but it looked uh, like Hayes had a pretty good shot at it. Bob was open there. There was nobody within uh, three or four yards of him. When you see the flag back in the offensive backfield like that, it usually indicates only one thing, offensive holding, and uh, that'll get the Cowboys third and extremely long yardage. If, uh, as we suspect, Baltimore will take the play, and that they will. 15 yards from the spot of the foul moves the ball back to the Dallas 31-yard line. Holding is the indication given by the referee, Norm Schachter. So the Cowboys to have a third down again, but they have to uh, they have to reach the Baltimore 36 for their first down. So that is, uh, what, 35 yards? <laughs> Earlier in the season, I said uh, something about when it's third and 35 or your selection of plays is somewhat limited. I would suspect that that, that it still holds true. Raised in the ball game again, replacing Thomas. He and Garrison are the setbacks. The draw, Garrison is to the 40, up to the 42-yard line. He picked up uh, 11 yards, but not nearly enough for the first down. And once again, the Cowboys will have to punt. So uh, a wasted break as far as the Cowboys are concerned. The big interception by uh, Chuck Howley, which gave Dallas field position in Baltimore territory, goes for naught. And Ron Whitby will be punting for the third time this afternoon. Ron Gardine, number 30, is deep. 
you have to forgive me for uh, referring to these players by numbers. So I'm so used to doing this on television. <laughs> nice kick. Gardine inside the 10. Fumbles it. A fumble at the 10-yard line. Let's wait and see. Dallas has it. A tremendous boot by Whitby. Gardine tried to make an over-the-shoulder catch. The wind had it, and he fumbled at the 10. The Cowboys recovered at the 9. And guess who was down there? Private Cliff Harris. <laughs> the young man who is now on active duty leave from Fort Sam Houston got the football, and uh, Dallas fans will recall what a big break man he was all year long, playing with the specialty teams on leave from the uh, United States Army. Boy, he got a big one this time. He's got an act for being in the right place at the right time. First and goal to go from the nine. Morton has him up to the line of scrimmage. They give it to Thomas. He's to the five. Stopped at that point by the Colts. Second and goal from the five-yard line. And, Frank, we have our first confrontation of the afternoon. And guess who? Mr. Mike Curtis on the part of the Baltimore Colts. Mr. Pettis Norman for the Dallas Cowboys. Chest to chest and jaw to jaw with their arms behind their back. Lots of words but no action so far. Curtis, Curtis did poke a finger in his yes, eye, though. Curtis has the reputation as the Baltimore meanie. Curtis is not a, exactly uh, regarded with gentleness on a football field for the Cowboys. Nose of the ball just outside the five-yard line. Second and goal for the Cowboys. Martin. Stonewall. As he feeds it to Thomas. Perhaps a loss of a yard back to the seventh. Boy, well, you sure get the impression that both offenses are kind of tiptoeing it so far, don't you? Sure do. They haven't tried anything fancy at all. Uh, just uh, testing each other, testing each other, testing each other. It would be uh, a shame if the Cowboys couldn't convert this, their second big break of the afternoon. But uh, third and seven, you've got to believe he'll go with either the pitch or, uh, or a pass. Third and goal from the seven-yard line. Reeves is in there along with Garrison at running back. Rucker wide to the right side. Hayes is split to the left. Morton, back in the pocket for Rucker. Couldn't reach it. Pass looked like it took off a little bit on Morton. Rucker never really had a chance as he went for the corner. The pass was well out of bounds, and the Cowboys will be forced to try for the field goal. It's a bad pass. There's not much you can do to explain something like that. Uh, We've seen it happen to Craig on a similar situation. Frank, I don't remember if you were doing the ball game, but about mid-season, he had Mike Ditko open from the 14. Uh, same corner of the end zone, and the ball sailed on him. It just went out of bounds. And speaking of the 14, it'll be a 14-yard field goal attempt. Dan Reeves to hold. Snap is back. Kick is up. It is good. And the Cowboys draw first blood here at Super Bowl V, leading 3 to nothing. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. A stone ground corn tortilla, deep fried and stuffed with meat, Mexican herbs and spices, crisp shredded lettuce, tangy cheddar cheese, and topped off with our middle-of-the-road hot sauce. A terrific taco. That's what you get for driving through a jack-in-the-box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient jack-in-the-box locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Excuse me, but does that car you're driving have a 93 to discourage thieves? Does it help reduce exhaust pollutants with a 9 and a 10? Unless you're driving Chevrolet Chevelle, the answer is probably no. Chevelle offers so many reasons to buy. We've numbered them from 1 to 109. You've changed in the number of things you expect from a new car. And that's exactly why Chevrolet has changed Chevelle. Frank Lieber with Vern Lundquist at Super Bowl V in Miami. Mike Clark about to kick off. Ron Gardine and Jim Duncan are the deep men for the Colts standing on the goal line. Very short boots. Duncan at the 15, 20, 30. And he is hit hard at the 35-yard line by Mark Washington. Along with Claxton Welch. Officials mark it at the 36. First and 10 Baltimore from that point with 524. Left in the first quarter of Super Bowl V, Dallas leads it 3 nothing. Johnny Unitas, one for two thus far for four yards. 
course, had one intercepted by Chuck Howley. United feeding Bulash wide around the right side. Lilly has him from behind. At the line of scrimmage, no gain. Great pursuit by Bob Lilly. And the pattern continues, Frank. Neither team able to generate anything offensively. Bulash has now carried three times for minus one yard. Uh, he has been the only ball carrier so far for Baltimore. They've not used Tom Nowatsky at all. Second and ten. Colts at their 36-yard line. Then Eddie Hitton wide to the left side. Jefferson is wide to the right. United up the middle. Nowatsky crosses the 40 to the 43-yard line. Picked up about six. George Andre making the stop. Nice fake by United. It looked like he was going to go back to throw and then fed it to Nowatsky. He's got uh, kind of a Cinderella story. Fellow was cut by the uh, Detroit Lions just a week before the start of the season. Picked up by the Colts, and here he is starting in the Super Bowl. Third down. Baltimore needs a little less than four for the first down with the ball at the Colts' 42-yard line. Colts come up with a full house backfield this time. Jefferson is in there. He sets off in motion. Bulash trying to ram it for the first down. He got maybe a yard at most. And once again, the Cowboy defense holds, and the Colts will be forced upon on fourth and two from their 39. $15,000 per man for the winner, $7,500 for the loser. David Lee will do the punting for the uh, Colts. Hayes and Renfro deep standing on about the 15-yard line. Good snap to Lee. High kick. Fair catch signaled by Hayes. It bounds inside the 10, inside the 5, and it is down by the Colts. It is in the end zone. It was touched by the Colts at about the 2, but they played a little bit of volleyball down there and batted it right in the end zone. There must have been seven of them around the football, and it's amazing that nobody... Uh, got the thing because it was laying dead on the one and then just kind of trickled into the end zone before anybody touched it. Here's a timeout. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh, boy! There's just nothing of folks like the follow you get with the Valentine boat. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine. Come on out to Valentine Marine's Super Bowl Boat Show. We've got the game tuned in. It's the biggest all-fired boat show of 1971, featuring the Super Boats of the 70s. Listen to just one of the many Super Specials you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aeroglass Deep V Walkthrough, 60-horse Johnson Tilt Trailer. A low, low $1,992. That's right, only $1,992. Many other boat show bargains to choose from, but you have to see them to believe them. The 71 fleet is in at Valentine, and we've got just the boat you and your family have been wanting at the price you've been wanting to pay. So whether you're an old salt or just getting your first sea legs, come on out to Valentine Marine Super Bowl Boat Show. Bring the family. We've got free cokes and coffee for everyone. That's Valentine Marine at Harry Hines Vila Circle and 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open tonight for your convenience. KRLD Dallas. Well, the Cowboys with a real break have a first down on their 20-yard line following a rather uh, unusual touchback. Three minutes and four seconds left to play in the first quarter, and neither team has picked up a first down in this ballgame. Cowboys lead 3-0 after taking uh, advantage of a Ron Gardine fumble on a punt and winding up with a Mike Clark field goal. Dallas with a full house backfield now. Reggie Rucker sets in motion. The give is to Garrison, finds a nice hole up the middle, and Walt carries it to the 25-yard line. Logan making the stop along with uh, Ray May. We haven't got the rule book in front of us, but on that uh, bunting situation, obviously you have to down that ball, not touch it before it goes in the end zone. There's no doubt the Colts touched it uh, about the two-yard line, just let it bounce around, and they kind of watched it roll in. You know, it's amazing. That that circumstance, the fumble, the pass interception, uh, the breaks again this week have been going the way of the Cowboys. I'm reminding, uh, remindful of what Tom Landry said on the plane coming back to San Francisco. The way things have been going for us, don't count us out. Three good breaks the Cowboys have uh, had in this first period. Here's Garrison. 
Picking his hold of the inside, he's got the first down at the 31-yard line. So the first first down of the ball game with two minutes and ten seconds left to play in the opening period. Oh, it's been a long time since we've seen a game go this long without a first down by either side. Big Burley John Nyland now pulling on the play and leading the interference. Uh, the Cowboy Convoy has been very, very much in evidence. They've a tremendous tribute to the front line, the versatility of the offensive line this year because of the position switches due to injuries. They've done a magnificent job. Rucker and Hayes both wide to the left side in what the Cowboys call their flip formation. Morton feeding Thomas around the right side. Up to the 34 to the 35. He stepped out, the officials say, at the 34. Second and six. Bubba Smith was over there, and uh, so was Stukes. And again, Frank, the Cowboys, uh, from that formation, with the, uh, the flip formation with both wide receivers on the same side of the field on the wide side, the Cowboys like to run to the weak side, and they did it again, coming back to the short side with the pulling guard, John Nyland and, uh, and Blaine Nye on that occasion. Thomas uh, comes out of the ball game. Dan Reeves is in. Second call at seven. Ball spotted at the Dallas 33. Morton back to throw. Sets up the screen to Reeves to the 30, 35. Reeves cutting back to the inside to the 40. Dan Reeves is up to the 48-yard line. Fine run by Reeves. And another Dallas first down. Oh, you talk about following your blockers. Old coach had to show young Dwayne Thomas how to do it, you know. He sure did. <laughs> I mean, he cut back and uh, gave uh, five yards knowing that he'd pick up three additional blockers by doing so. Craig Morton now two of five, Frank, for 20 yards. Uh, hit on his first pass, and he hit on this one. He's hit his back both times so far. Has not been able to find his wide receiver. Picked up close to 15 on that play, and a Dallas first down. Cowboys at their 47-yard line. Hayes wide to the right side. Rucker is split to the left. Morton straight back to throw. Fires the bomb for Hayes. And Hayes has it at the 15-yard line. Hayes was sandwiched between Jerry Logan, number 20, and Logan and Hayes are having a few words down there in the field. And Stukes and made a great catch at the 13-yard line. It'll be a Cowboy first down. And I'll tell you what he did, Frank. He put some kind of move on uh, second-year man Charlie Stoop. Bobby ran and ambled down to the 35 and for some reason chose to have my eye on him all along. And he almost stopped on the 35 and Stoop fell for it. And then he zoomed past him and Craig Morton laid it in perfectly. And in addition to that, a personal foul penalty called on Jerry Logan of the Colts Half the distance to the goal moves the ball to the six. And it'll be a first and goal for the Cowboys from the Colts six-yard line with 37 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Hayes comes out wide to the left side. The rest of the tee in tight. Thomas and Garrison are the setbacks. Martin throwing excellent protection. Pass is batted away by Ted Hendricks, number 83, the right side linebacker. And it looked like there was a little confusion in there between uh, Dwayne Thomas and Walt Garrison about who should line up where. Well, he was going to Dwayne Thomas, and uh, Ralph Neely was sitting in front of Thomas by about three yards at the personal convoy, and there was nobody over there. But uh, Hendricks is 6'7", has got that tremendous reach. Here's Calvin Hill checking into the ball game for the first time outside of that kickoff return. Second and goal from the six-yard line. Rucker comes out, so does Mike Ditka. Well, now Rucker heads back in. Full house backfield for the Cowboys. Thomas sweeps the left side, caught behind the line at the seven-yard line. For a loss in the play, Hilton... Driving in there is the Cowboys went with their three big backs. They had Garrison, they had Hill, and they had Dwayne Thomas. All in there in the full house backfield. Now be third and goal from the seven. Well, they continue to have trouble inside the ten. This is the second time they've been in. Dwayne Thomas is limping off the field, uh, and Calvin Hill taking his place. The gun sounds ending the first quarter. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. 
pound of 100% beef, served up as two sizzling patties on a fresh triple deck bun, with crisp dill pickles and shredded lettuce, a few loving spoonfuls of secret sauce, and tangy melted cheddar cheese. The new and huge bonus Jack hamburger. That's what you get for driving through a Jack in the Box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient Jack in the Box locations in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Happy Super Bowl from the Canterbury Shop in North Park. To begin the year 1971, the Canterbury Shop in North Park is displaying its appreciation for the loyal response of the well-dressed men whom we have attired and for the tasteful women who buy for them. In honor of the Super Bowl, we have trimmed one-third off the prices on world-famous Pierre Cardin lines and from 20% to 50% off on other famous clothing and accessories. The Canterbury Shop wishes our cowboys the very best today and a happy Super Bowl to you. From Pierre Cardin. As we head into the second period of play here at Super Bowl V in Miami, the Dallas Cowboys with a third and goal to go from the seven yard line. Dwayne Thomas has twisted his right knee, but is expected to be back in the ball game. The Cowboys have inserted Dan Reed at the running back position. Dallas leading 3 0, 14 yard field goal by Mike Clark, but uh, the Cowboys, I think, Vern, you'll agree, uh, should have a few more up on the board right now. Well, with the breaks that have gone their way, Frank, and if you, was, uh, you and I were talking during the commercial break, it appears that there's a great degree of confusion going on in that backfield. I know that on the passing play to Thomas, he appeared to be confused with the set, and uh, I think it was rather obvious that somebody in the backfield missed a block on a linebacker in the last running play to the way. Rucker to the left side, Hayes to the right, third and goal from the seventh. Reeves and Garrison, the setbacks. Here's Morton, straight back to throw. Still looking, and he is caught, gets the pass away, and a flag goes down, and I believe we're going to have intentional grounding. Now let's wait and see. If that is the case, it involves the loss of down as well, of course. I think it's fairly obvious that that's what's going to happen. It's kind of amazing. That's the third time it's happened to Craig this year. The second time in as many games. He got uh, the same penalty called on him against San Francisco last week early in the first quarter. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, after the game in Los Angeles, last year as a matter of fact, uh, we played the Rams out in L.A. and Craig was talking about Roman Gabriel's ability to get away with that technique of downing the football and thought he could do it as well, but he hasn't had the success that Gabriel does. Mike Clark will try a 30-yard field goal with Dan Reeves to hold. Virtually no angle at all. He'll be operating with a wind against him here. It is up. It is far enough. It is good, but there's a flag down. Let's wait. Let's wait and see what the uh, penalty is. The penalty is against the Colts. It is refused. So Clark adds a 30-yard field goal to his 14-yarder. The Cowboys lead 6-0. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh, boy, there's just nothing up close like the follow you get with the Valentine boat. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine, and Valentine's having the biggest boat show blast of 1971, featuring the new and exciting boats for the 70s. During Valentine Marine's Super Bowl boat show, you'll find dozens of tremendous money-saving specials on the greatest names in boating. Here's a typical super special you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aeroblast Dry Hull, 85-horse Johnson Dilly Trader, an incredibly low $2,492. That's right, only $24.92. We've got boats of every size and shape all at boat show prices but you've got to see them to believe them the 71 feet is in at valentine marine and we've got a boat for every family and every budget so what are you waiting for come on out we've got the game tuned in don't miss the gigantic super bowl boat show going on right now at valentine marine free coats and coffee for everyone harry hines via the circle and 1982 fort worth avenue in oak cliff open tonight for your convenience <laughs> Jim Duncan of the Colts returns Clark's kickoff to the 25-yard line at his first and 10. For Baltimore, just underway here in the second quarter, 14 minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Nose of the ball just inside the 25. Johnny United sends Jefferson wide to the right side. Hinton is split to the left. Nowatsky and Bulash are the setbacks. 
Colts still looking for that first first down. United throwing incomplete. Mel Renfro was over there covering the intended receiver, Eddie Hinton, the former University of Oklahoma star, and uh, Morton may be having his problems, but so is Mr. United. Dave Edwards also, uh, good pass defense on the play, was in front of the intended receiver, and Johnny Yu got dumped back on the 15. The Colts have only uh, seven yards, total, no, 11 yards, I beg your pardon, total offense in the ballgame so far, and no first downs. They picked up four yards on one pass completion, and only seven yards rushing. All of that on one run by Tom Nowatsky. Second and ten. Baltimore from its 25. United. Faking to his left. Goes a short pass to Jefferson, but he can't hold it. Incomplete. You know, you'd like to say it's great defense, but it hasn't been so far. <laughs> it's been kind of a keystone comedy on offense for both ball clubs with the exception of the one long pass to the, the two passes, Morton to Reed and Morton to Hayes. Uh, neither team has done much. Third and ten now for Baltimore from its 25-yard line. Colts still looking for their first first down of the ball game here in the second quarter. Hinton to the left side, Jefferson to the right, Bulash and Nowatsky the setback. And Johnny Yu back to throw. Good protection this time. The pass is caught by Mackey. John Mackey takes a tip pass, and it will go all the way for the touchdown. The Cowboys are claiming it was tipped first by a Colt, but I don't believe it will hold up, and the touchdown will stand. And Mel Renfro is livid with rage. I've never seen him quite that upset. He's still stomping and pounding his feet. Now he's going over to another official to plead the case, but it won't go. They'll give him the touchdown on it. Actually, I think uh, Charlie Waters thought he had the interception and went for it and uh, zipped right down the field, and that was all she wrote. Mackey was right behind him, and there was nobody close. 75 yards on the touchdown from Unitas to Mackey on the deflected pass. Boy, there was no doubt the uh, Cowboys had the Colts well covered, and it was a freak thing with that ball being deflected as it was right into the hands of John Mackey. Jim O'Brien will try the extra point. Earl Morrow puts it down. The kick is blocked. The kick is blocked, and we have a tie game. So, with 14-10 remaining in the first half, it's Dallas 6, Baltimore 6. And we'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. A thin, flaky crust filled with tart Jonathan or Pippin apples, sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, cooked crisp and golden and hot. A truly tasty hot apple turnover. That's what you get for driving through a jack-in-the-box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient jack-in-the-box locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. There's only one way to find out what a Chevy Vega is all about, and that's to drive one. Road and Track Magazine drove one and wound up saying, Vega is beyond a doubt the best handling passenger car ever built in the U.S. Now, if you find that a little hard to swallow, we'll understand. After all, who'd expect an economical little car like Vega to be a hero on the highway? You'd expect it to be, well, economical. And Vega is, but Vega is more. It's the little car that does everything well. O'Brien just about ready to kick off of the Colts, and we've had a little bit of everything here in, in less than a quarter and a half. Blocked extra points, a freak touchdown there by the uh, by the uh, Colts, with the officials saying that uh, Charlie Waters was the Cowboy who deflected the ball, and the Cowboys claiming that one of the Baltimore players touched it first, which would make it an illegal forward pass. You know, ordinarily, Mel Retro is so cool on the football field. Uh, I think he feels justified in his case because he was really upset. At the prices they're playing for, you can understand it. Short kick goes into the end zone. Calvin Hill will down it. <laughs> so the Cowboys will bring it out to the 20-yard line. I think uh, Calvin wanted to make the Colts run a little bit. He took a couple of steps to within a yard of the playing field, and then uh, I think all the time he knew he was going to oh, down it. 
sort of the few theological references to Ted Emmerich when yeah. he came down to step face to face with him. Well, let's see what effect this quick touchdown has on the Cowboys who have had to work uh, mightily for the six points they've been able to put on the board. 30 yard and a 14 yard field goal by Mike Clark. Rucker wide to the right side. Hayes is split to the left. Morton giving to Dwayne Thomas, who's back in the ball game, and he's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Fine defensive play by uh, Billy Ray Smith, a Wiley veteran, number 74. And again, uh, Frank, it's obvious that Baltimore is king. It's entirely defensive plan around Dwayne Thomas. They've done a great job on him. He's carried eight times for only nine yards so far. Dwayne, of course, picked up 143 against San Francisco at 135 against Detroit. Second and 12. Dallas from the 18-yard line. Garrison and Thomas behind Craig Morton. Morton back to throw, being rushed by Bubba Smith. Gets it away. Intended for Mike Ditka, the tight end at the 25-yard line. Ditka couldn't reach it. As Morton took a good lick from Big Bubba. Bubba's had probably his best year in his four years as a pro. Remember, the uh, there's quite a confrontation uh, person to person between he and Rayfield Wright this afternoon. I remember when, in a pregame uh, a couple of years ago, he and Ralph Neely had one going, and Ralph was most upset because he felt that Bubba perhaps got the best of him in that contest, and this time it's Rayfield's turn. Third and 12. Cowboys moving from their 18-yard line. Hello. Morton throwing over the middle. Garrison can't hold it. Walt Garrison drops it at the line of scrimmage. And once again, Morton took a good shot this time from Billy Ray Smith. And the Cowboys will be punting. So thus far, as far as Dallas is concerned, it's been a case of the absent offense. Ron Woodby will be punting from his five-yard line against the wind. Ron Gardine standing on the cold 40. Gardine waiting, fields it at the 38-yard line. He is caught by Mark Washington at that spot and drop. So the Colts will play it first and 10 from their 38 following the boots. 13 minutes, 6 seconds left to play in the first half. Cowboys 6, Colts 6. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine. Come on out to Valentine Marine's Super Bowl Boat Show. We've got the game tuned in. It's the biggest all-fired boat show of 1971, featuring the Super Boats of the 70s. Listen to just one of the many Super Specials you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aeroglass Deep V Walkthrough, 60-horse Johnson Tilt Trailer, a low, low $1,992. That's right, only $19.92. Many other boat show bargains to choose from, but you have to see them to believe them. The 71 Fleet is in at Valentine, and we've got just the boat you and your family have been wanting at the price you've been wanting to pay. So whether you're an old salt or just getting your first sea leg, come on out to Valentine Marine Super Bowl Boat Show. Bring the family. We've got free Cokes and coffee for everyone. That's Valentine Marine at Harry Hines Vila Circle and 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open the night for your convenience. This is Super Bowl Five from KRLD Dallas. First and ten. Colts with the ball following the 43-yard punt by Ron Woodby at their 38-yard line. Johnny United's now two out of five for 79 yards and 75 of those on the touchdown to Mackey. And lots of movement on both sides of the line before the ball is snapped. And the indication is that this one will go against the Colts. Three yards, and uh, Bob Lilly adroitly stepped across and smacked him up the side of the helmet. <laughs> Not often you get a free shot at those guys, and they like to take advantage of it as often as they can. Illegal procedure against Baltimore will set up first and 15 for the Colts from their 33. Cowboys six, Colts six. Super Bowl five. Early in the second period, 13.06 left in the first half. Johnny United beating Bulldogs, who's caught at the line of scrimmage. Bulls forward for a yard, maybe two. Jethro Pugh. 
Over there, number 75. You know, Frank Norm, while he was at TCU, had uh, tremendous injury problems, and uh, we had a chance to chat with him at length Monday afternoon at the Colts training camp. He said one of the reasons that uh, he wasn't injury prone this year is because he was more relaxed. And I said, well, that seems to be kind of a contrast. He would seem to be more tense in the pros than in college. He said, no, for some reason with Unitas back there, it relaxes you a great deal. Second and 13, the Colts from their 35-yard line. Here's Bullice. Hit again at the line of scrimmage. Boy, he butted heads with somebody down there and came out second best. He just bounced back about two yards. Fell forward to the line of uh, scrimmage. Give him one yard to the 37-yard line. That'll set up third. Colts still need 12 for the first down from their 37. Well, the two big running backs aren't exactly setting the world afire. Bulash has carried six times for only three yards for the Colts, and Dwayne Thomas has carried uh, eight times for nine yards for the Cowboys. So... No great running being ex exhibited so far this afternoon. Passing situation here on third and 12 in the old master John United fades back, fires the sideline throw for Eddie Hinton over his head. Mel Renfro on pass coverage, and the Colts will be forced to punt. George Andre introduced himself to Johnny United again as they uh, met back at the 28 on the ground. United uh, here in the last year was named the Greatest quarterback of all time, completing the NFL's first 50 years of play. David Lee back in punt formation. Renfro and Hayes, twin safeties. Fumbles the ball, gets it away, however. Hayes at the 25 of the Cowboys to the 30-yard line and uh, rushed out of bounds with an assist from Jack Maitland at the 34 of Dallas. Cowboys will put it in play from there. That stops the clock with 11.38 left in the first half. Cowboys, uh, by the way, will not return home uh, tonight as is their normal custom following the ball game. They'll be back tomorrow. And I'm sure you've uh, read or heard of plans for the uh, big parade that the Chamber of Commerce is co-sponsoring through downtown Dallas. Win or lose tomorrow for the Super Bowl Cowboys. Officials mark it at the 33-yard line. First and 10. Morton sends Rucker in motion to the left side. The pitch goes to Thomas. Thomas picks his way to the 35. A couple of yards in the play. It'll be second and eight. Well, obviously, Craig Morton and Tom Landry in uh, cooperation trying to still find the chink in that Baltimore defense because that time when they sent the man in motion to the wide side of the field, they had both receivers on the wide side again, a variation of the flip, and they sent Thomas to that wide side. As we pointed out throughout the ball game, they've been going to the weak side off of that formation, but without any success. So they tried something else and didn't meet with much more there. On second and eight, Hayes to the left side, Rucker to the right. Martin dropping back to throw. Over the middle on one bounce to Bob Hayes. And that doesn't go. And he had Bobby Hayes open again. He just underthrew the football. Craig is now uh, three for ten for the afternoon. That'll set up a third and eight for the Cowboys from their 35-yard line. Frank, that helicopter's not very far above us. I wouldn't say we're high, but uh, we're probably the only people in the park who can call the ball game and the Orange Bowl regatta at the same time. That's some 20 miles away over to our right off of uh, Biscayne Bay. Third and eight, Dallas from the 35. Morton back in the pocket, flips a short one out to Reed. Dan Reed's trying to make his move. Gets back to the uh, line of scrimmage, and that's about it. May, number 56, Ray May, the outside linebacker on the left side, made the stop, and the Cowboys will have to punt it up. You know, I hate to say it, but so far it's been kind of a dull game. Uh, it just hasn't been much generated at all. A couple of long plays and a few sparkling defensive gems, particularly by the Cowboy defense, but not much going. Fly goes down as Whitney gets the snap from center, a high kick. Very short. Gardein signals for the fair catch at the 22 of uh, Baltimore. Let's see what the penalty was. Now they're going to bring it back. So uh, apparently, they would guess it's against the Cowboys. The uh, referee, Norm Schachter, is discussing the option right now with Mike Curtis. Pardon me, with uh, Ray May, the cold linebacker. And the preliminary indication we get is an offside against Dallas. 
the Cowboys will have to punt it again from five yards further back. Give you a statistical idea of what's happened so far, and again, it's not much. Johnny Unitas is uh, two for six, 79 yards, and 75 of it coming on the deflected touchdown pass to John Mackey. Running-wise, Baltimore hasn't done much at all. Total of 10 yards on the ground is all. Norm Bulash has three on six carries, and Nowatzki one on seven. For the Cowboys, Craig Morton is three of 10 for 60 yards. Uh, Dwayne Thomas has carried nine times for 11 yards, while Garrison four for 24. Here's Whitby punting again. This one, a fine kick. And again, Gardine has to signal for the fair catch this time at the 20-yard line. So actually, the Cowboys, despite the penalty, gained a couple of yards. Gardine's first fair catch is up to 22. 50-yard kick off the foot of Ron Whitby. He's doing a, an excellent job this afternoon. You know, Baltimore just hasn't had the field position. They had uh, one time at the 47. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Big, fresh, russet potatoes slice into shoestrings, then deep fried to that proverbial crisp golden brown and served in a cavernous bag. French fries that'll boggle your mouth. That's what you get for driving through a jack-in-the-box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient jack-in-the-box locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Happy Super Bowl from the Canterbury Shop in North Park. To begin the year 1971, the Canterbury Shop in North Park is displaying its appreciation for the loyal response of the well-dressed men whom we have attired and for the tasteful women who buy for them. In honor of the Super Bowl, we have trimmed one-third off the prices on world-famous Pierre Cardin lines and from 20% to 50% off on other famous clothing and accessories. The Canterbury Shop wishes our cowboys the very best today. And a happy Super Bowl to you from Pierre Cardin. Frank Lever with Vern Lundquist at Super Bowl V in Miami. Colts, following the 50-yard punt by Whidbey, have the first down at their 20-yard line. Baltimore has picked up just one first down of this ballgame, that on the touchdown pass to Mackey. Cowboys have had just two. Here's United throwing. Still looking. Flips the short pass as he tried to set up the screen intended for Norm Bulash. But the Cowboys jammed it up good, and the pass misfired. And United apparently sees that he's having a, a great deal of trouble trying to run in the Cowboys, having picked up just 10 yards rushing. So now he's going to the air and see if he has any success up there. Second and ten. United sending Eddie Hipp wide to the left side. Roy Jefferson is flanked to the right. Bullard sweet, trying to left side, chased by Leroy Jordan. And Waters moving up from the secondary, making the stop after a pickup of a yard. Norm Bullard dropped after a gain of one yard. It'll be third and nine. Bulaj now seven carries for only four yards. And again, he's, he's been as ineffective as Dwayne Thomas for the Cowboys as these defenses have, have uh, dominated the game throughout. There's been nothing approaching a sustained drive at all, obviously, with only three first downs on both sides. Colts up to the line of scrimmage uh, behind their center, Bill Curry. Jefferson to the right side. Hinton to the left. Unitas, thanks to Bulaj, back to throw. Being chased, flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to have to run for it. Fumbles the ball, and just Will Buell recovers at the 29. Charles Chuck Kelly was the guy who laid it on Johnny Unitas waist high, really lowered the boom on him, and Johnny U fumbled at the 25. It bounced up to the 29, where Jeff Rowe adroitly fell on the football. And again, Frank, a break for the Cowboys. They have been unable to uh, take advantage of them. Let's see what they can do this time. Cowboys have twice had first downs inside the Colts' 10 and have been unable to do better than a field goal on each occasion. Now they have a first down at the Colts' 29 as Morton sends Rucker in motion to the left. They give us to Thomas, back to the right, east of the 25, caught by Bubba Smith from behind after a pickup of four yards. And now it's Pendus Norman who is shaken up on the play and is limping off the field. I don't think it's uh, 
that common knowledge, but Pettis Norman has been playing since the Los Angeles exhibition game back in August with a double hernia. And that has got to hurt. I had lunch with him the uh, day before yesterday and asked him if he was taking a vacation after the Super Bowl. He said, yeah, I'm checking into Parkland Hospital to have an operation. So that's where he'll be spending his time once he gets back to Dallas. Second and six. Cowboys from the Colt 25. Garrison set on the wing off to the right side. Rucker in motion to the left. Morton back to throw. Blitz is on. Pass is complete to Reeves at the 20 to the 15. Reeves is inside the 10 and out of bounds at the 7-yard line. Ray May finally made the stop. Now there's no doubt why Reeves is seeing so much action because Tom Landry is the greatest regard for him as a clutch football player in clutch situations. It's got to be a great thrill for Dan Reeves also, Frank, to... Uh have had the injury up in St. Louis year before last that uh, most folks thought just might end his career, and it's certainly limited to that uh, knee injury that took place. And he's come back and now playing his first Super Bowl, and he's made two key clutch pass uh, receptions so far. It is first and goal for the Cowboys from the Colts' seven-yard line. Martin has him up to the line of scrimmage, the fake to Garrison, the toss out to Thomas. He's to the five. He is over. Touchdown. Morton to Thomas for seven yards. And the Cowboys' first touchdown of Super Bowl V. And Dallas reclaims the lead 12-6. to six. Quite a sight on the near sidelines as Dwayne Thomas and Craig Morton met each other. A little soul brother handshake from Mr. Thomas and Mr. Morton. Mike Clark will try the extra point with Reeves to hold. 7.53 left to play in the first half of Super Bowl V. Reeves puts it down. The kick is up. It is good. Dallas 13, Baltimore 6. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh, boy. There's just nothing up close like the follow through you get with the Valentine boat. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine, and Valentine's having the biggest boat show blast of 1971, featuring the new and exciting Boat Full of 70s. During Valentine Marine's Super Bowl boat show, you'll find dozens of tremendous money-saving specials on the greatest names in boating. Here's a typical super special you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aero Glass Dry Hull, 85-horse Johnson, Dilly Trader, an incredibly low $2,492. That's right, only $2,492. We've got boats of every size and shape, all at Boat show prices, but you've got to see them to believe them. The 71 Fleet is in at Valentine Marine, and we've got a boat for every family and every budget. So what are you waiting for? Come on out. We've got the game tuned in. Don't miss the gigantic Super Bowl boat show going on right now at Valentine Marine. Free coats and coffee for everyone. Harry Hines via the Circle on 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open tonight for your convenience. <laughs> Jim Duncan of the Colts with a fine kickoff return from the 8-yard line to the Baltimore 38. And Baltimore with a first down now. The Colts moving from their 38, still with only one first down. They've given up the ball twice on fumbles, once on a pass interception. Dallas leading 13-6. United's back to throw. Pass is over the middle. It is fought for and a intercepted. A flag is down. Herb Adderley colliding with the receiver, Leroy Jordan. Intercepted the pass. We may have a pass interference ruling coming up against Satterley, which will give the Colts a first down near midfield. So Herb Adderley of the Cowboys, the uh, only man ever to play in three Super Bowl games, guilty of pass interference. And the Colts have a first down at the Cowboy 49. Jefferson to the right side. Hinton to the left. Unitas. Back to throw. Quick toss to Jefferson. Has it. Out of bounds by Adderley at the 41. Pickup of eight on the play. It's second and two. On the pass interference, uh, Herb Adderley trying a technique that we've seen him pull successfully so often this year for the Cowboys. And that's a last second leap over the shoulder of the man. It takes exquisite timing to perfect it to arrive just at the time the football does. And that time, Herb's vision apparently was blocked a bit. And uh, not much doubt that he was guilty of pass interference on the play at all. Jefferson to the right, Hinton to the left on second and two for the Colts from the Dallas 41. United skips to Bullock. He drives and has the Colts' second first down of the ballgame. 
at the 37-yard line. So the Colts uh, working on a sustained drive now, trying to put something together after the uh, kickoff return by Gardine. The drive started at the Baltimore 38, now has reached the Dallas 37. Jefferson wide to the right side, the rest of the tee in tight. Bulash and Nowatsky in back of Johnny Yu. Unitas faking to Bulash. Gets the pass away and is intercepted. Hell Renfro has it at the 15-yard line. He is dropped immediately, and once again, Andre laid the wood to Unitas, who's getting up very slowly. Now, let's see, what is that? Two fumble recoveries, two pass interceptions? Right. Defense has been Johnny on the spot. Uh, just ex excellent defense. Uh, I think that's why they probably got so upset with a touchdown pass a while ago. Uh, they've taken a tremendous amount of personal pride in what they've accomplished over the last seven weeks. Having given, having given up only one touchdown, that to uh, San Francisco last week. The defense, that is. Tremendous record that they've accomplished in this drive towards the Super Bowl. First and ten. Cowboys from the 15. Morton giving to Thomas. He's up to the 17-yard line. Pick up a two on the play. Then by Ray May. Goes outside linebacker. That touchdown by Mackey was only the uh, the second touchdown given up by the Cowboy defense in 26 quarters of play. Got word from the uh, sidelines that Earl Morrill is warming up. As you pointed out, Johnny Yu was awfully slow getting up after George Andrew belted him on the previous pass interception, and Morrill is now warming up on the sidelines. Officials of the ball marked at the 18, call it second and seven for the Cowboys. They're into the field. Thomas going the left side, got a block from Nyland across the 20, up to the 22-yard line. He needed to uh, reach the 25 for the first down. So that'll set up the third and three with five minutes left to play in the first half and the Cowboys leading 13 to six. It'd be ironic if uh, Morrill did come into this ball game. Of course, uh, he was more or less in the eyes of many that go to the first Super Bowl appearance by the Colts against the Jets. And he himself had to be relieved by Johnny United. He said yesterday in an article in the Miami newspaper, the only way he'd play, probably, if Johnny United got injured. Third and three. Morton barking the signals. The give is to Thomas. The flag is down. Dwayne driving for the first down. Has enough, but let's see what the penalty marker was. Now we get a preliminary indication of Baltimore offside. In either way, then the Cowboys would pick up the first down because Thomas picked up uh, just about five, the same they'd get on the penalty. Frank, word again from the uh, Baltimore bench. Johnny United injured his ribs. They were applying ice to them right now, so we don't know whether or not he will make a reappearance in the ballgame. Offsides it is against the Colts, so the Cowboys pick up the first down at their 28-yard line. Dallas with a 14 and 30 yard field goal by Mike Clark. Seven yard touchdown pass from Morton to Thomas. Here's Morton back to throw. Flips it out to Thomas. He's to the 25. Chased by Bubba Smith. Puts a great move on Smith and gets across the 30 up to the 34 yard line. Boy, Bubba was really faked out of his shoes. Almost wound up in the second row of feet. Ended up piling into Charlie Stukes over on the Baltimore bench. Dwayne reversed his field entirely and cut back in. He did a, a pirouette like uh, George Ballantyne Ballet. He picked up six yards in the play. It'll be second and four. And Morton is from there, 33. Excuse me, Morton is now six for 13, improving his statistical average. Uh, I think all of you are aware that Tom Landry said he had to hit 50% to win this ball game today, and he's approaching it now after being three for 10. Hayes and Rucker wide to the left. Morton back to throw. Pass to Rucker. Has it at the 30-yard line. Sends away from May to the 35. A penalty marker is down as Rucker crosses the 40-yard line. Is up to the 42. And I'm afraid Mr. Rayfield Wright got caught doing something a bit illegal. Uh, holding is the name of the game. I suspect the Cowboys were caught in an infraction. 
15 yards from the spot of the foul, which apparently is right at the 35 or 34 yard line. So that'll move it back inside the 20. Well, I got to believe the Cowboys are a little mad at themselves for not having a bigger lead than they have right now with uh, the breaks that have come their way. Well, when you act, act, average out the breaks, uh, Baltimore has had none. Of course, it's a, it's a make or break situation, but fumbles and pass interceptions, that's four turnovers for Baltimore in the ball game, and the Cowboys have not suffered any. And, uh, and yet they lead only 13 to 6. It's kind of amazing. Now, the official uh, signal we get from the referee, Norm Schachter, is offensive pass interference. They've walked off 15 against the Cowboys and moved it back to the 18 yard line. Now, second down, just about 20 needed for the first down. Morton to Reeves at the 20. Reeves gets away from Stooks across the 25, and Jerry Logan bounces him out of bounds at the 28. He got about half of what they needed for the first down. Let's see where they mark it. They placed it at the 28-yard line. They have to net the 37. It'll be third and nine. I hate to say this, Miami, but it's getting cold up here on the roof. <laughs> we had great weather for five days. And yesterday, what, the a Florida version of a northern blue crew yeah. lowered it from 80 to 60. If it'd be great up here if it wasn't for the wind right now. That's just making it a little cool. Third and nine. Dallas from the 34-yard line. Hayes is in motion. Morton back to throw. Big rush, and Morton is dropped. Big loss on the play back to the 15-yard line. Roy Hilton came bouncing through along with Fred Miller. And Mike Curtis, the middle linebacker, led the blitz on the play. There was a maximum blitz uh, on the passing down. Tremendous pressure on Craig Morton. That's the second time he's been dropped now. The first for three yards, this time for 11, so a total of 14 yards taken off the passing game. Ron Woodby will be funny just about from the goal line in this situation. Ron Gardine is standing back in the cold 40. And uh, Jerry Logan is at the uh, Dallas 45. He's the short man. Whitby will take the snap on the three-yard line. Gardine fields it at the 45, and he is checked immediately. Cliff Harris again. Officials mark it at the Baltimore 48. And uh, crowd reaction indicating we have a new quarterback for the Baltimore Colts, and it is Earl Morrill. Well, Frank, you can't help but feel that if that is uh, all for Johnny Unitas for the day, it's, uh, it's a real shame because what a tremendous uh, contributor he has been to the success of pro football. Morrill backing up the throw in his first place. Pass is complete. Hitton at the 30-yard line down to the 25. Now, he wasted no time whatsoever. 26 yards on the forward pass. From Morrill to Eddie Hinton, and the Colts have a first down at the Dallas 26 with 2.20 left to play in the first half. Hinton goes wide to the left side, Jefferson to the right, Bulash is on the wing, off to the right, leaving Nowatsky as the sole setback. Morrill throwing again, looking this time for Hinton, he doesn't have him. Hitton got a hand on the ball at the far sideline defending against uh, Mel Renfro. And the Cowboys called a safety blitz that time. Cornell Green coming through, uh, strongly applying pressure to Earl Morrill, leaving, of course, Renfro absolutely with a one-on-one. -on -one. Mel's doing a superb job back there. Hinton hasn't been loose all afternoon. That stops the clock with 2.04, and we'll get the official two-minute warning. After this play, no doubt, in a second and ten for the Baltimore Colts from the Dallas 26. The Cowboys leading 13 to six. Late in the second quarter, Super Bowl five. Morrow's got him up to the line of scrimmage. Takes a couple of steps back. Throws over the middle. Jefferson has it. First down at the ten yard line. Jefferson refuses to go down. Drives to the five, and we get a flag. like Charlie Waters of the Cowboys was shaken up on that play. He's getting up very slowly. And Cliff Harris is moving onto the field. 
Jefferson caught that ball to 10, then refused to go down and just took a couple of tacklers with him to the five. And in addition to that, the Cowboys are being penalized half the distance to the goal to the two-yard line for personal foul. So the Colts will have a first and goal from the two. And here comes the two-minute warning. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Great big rings of Bermuda onions dipped in our wheat and corn flour batter, deep fried till they are crisp and crinkly, and served in a voluminous bag. Onion rings that really go crunch. That's what you get for driving through a jack-in-the-box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient jack-in-the-box locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Say you take that car you're driving and trade it in on a new Chevrolet Impala. You'll be happy to know that the new Impala will very likely be worth more when you decide to trade it in than any other car in Chevrolet's field. Sure, you've changed. You want more for your new car dollar. Fine, we've changed too. Today, you're getting more Impala than ever before. You're getting the biggest Chevrolet ever built. Power disc brakes, a new power ventilation system, a double panel roof, a bigger straw. One minute, 57 seconds left to play in the first half, and the Baltimore Colts are threatening as Earl Morrow has come into this ball game and uh, ignited the uh, Colts with two brilliant passes, one to Hinton, one to Jefferson. That plus a personal foul penalty has given the Colts a first and goal from the Dallas two-yard line. They are that far away from tying up this football game. That, of course, plus an extra point. Morrow sending Jefferson wide to the right side. He's got Nowatsky and Bulash behind him. It's Bulash getting the call. He gets a yard. He's down to the one. Colts have all of their timeouts remaining if they uh, choose to use same here. They've got plenty of time here. Although the clock is moving with a minute and 40 seconds left to play in a the half. They'll want to ideally score and leave the Cowboys uh, little time on the clock. Second and goal from the one-yard line. Again, Nowatsky and Bullice lined up behind Morrow. Bullice tries the right side. He is stopped behind the line for a loss of a yard. It'll be third and goal from the two. Leroy Jordan and Tom Stinsick making the stop for the Cowboys. The clock continues to move with exactly one minute left to play in the first half. And you've got to wonder, Frank, if they might not try uh, going wide with the pitch this time. They've had a minimal amount of success all afternoon going up the middle of the Cowboy defense. There's no reason to suspect that it might uh, be grudging this time. Third and goal from the two. 44 seconds, 43 seconds left in the half. Morrow calling the signals for Baltimore. The give is to Bulash. He did not make it. He is to the one-yard line. And now the Colts will probably uh, utilize the timeout here to regroup for the fourth down try. The clock shows 25 seconds. It is still moving. And now they call the timeout with 21 seconds. Left to play in the first half. And Morrow will check with his head coach, Don McCafferty on the sidelines across the way. And looking at that ball, we're right about where we started on this series of downs as the Cowboys have not given it an inch. They gave a yard on first down and then uh, pushed the Colts back to the two-yard line on second and third downs. And now we stand with fourth and goal from the two. And there's no indication yet that uh, Coach Don McCafferty is thinking field goal. Uh, one might wonder that... Uh, with the uh, minimal amount of success that they've had on the three previous running plays with Norm Bulash, they might not go for an al almost automatic three, but apparently wanting to take it all and go into the uh, halftime dressing room of the tie ball game because Jim O'Brien, I do not see coming, uh, showing any signs of coming onto the field. No, here comes Morrow back into the ball game, and O'Brien is still on the bench. Of course, being that close, and there to the right of the goal post, to give him a rather fierce angle for a field goal. Yeah, I would. That's right. The ball is at the uh, right side hash mark. Colts huddling now back in the 10-yard line. 
Cowboys encouraging each other down there in the goal line to hold them. Fourth down, goal to goal from the two-yard line. 21 seconds left to play in the first half. Dallas leading 13 to 6. Morrow calls the line down. Morrow is back to throw. He is looking. The pass is no good. It is incomplete in the end zone. And the Cowboys have held. The Colts are claiming that uh, their intended receiver out there, the tight end, Tom Mitchell, was held up by the Cowboys. He had a tough time getting through the line of scrimmage. And the pass wasn't really close, so the Cowboys will get the ball with 16 seconds left to play on their 20-yard line with the incompleted forward pass in the end zone. And I think you better give a tremendous amount of credit to Cornell Green because he did hold Mitchell up at the, side, at the uh, line of scrimmage, but it was perfectly legitimate technique. Uh, that's his man. That's his responsibility. And uh, Mitchell was slow in getting away. The game is to Walt Garrison by Craig Morton as the Cowboys will let the uh, clock run out the final 10 seconds of the first half of Super Bowl V. And Dallas will go to the dressing room with a lead and certainly a big psychological edge in thwarting the Colts on the goal line. And the cheer has the gun sound. Ending the first half with the score. That neither team has made a reappearance here prior to the uh, start of the second half. The wind has died down just a little bit, uh, at least from our vantage point, which is literally on the roof of the Orange Bowl Stadium, uh, high above the action. And uh, the wind has been somewhat of a factor, but not a crucial factor uh, down in the field. We uh, will check for you the statistics in the first half of play. First downs are tied at six apiece the way things wound up. Total offensive yardage. And this, uh, again, we'll just go to show you what a, a defensive-oriented football game this has been. 154 yards for the Baltimore Colts, 135 yards for the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are regarded as the home team this year in the Super Bowl. This is an alternating uh, situation, of course. The NFC team will be the visiting team again next year. The uh, Cowboys had the ball for 35 plays in the first half. The Colts for 26. Dallas picked up 49 yards rushing against 19 for Baltimore. Passing yardage. The Cowboys at 86. The Colts at 135. Uh, gross yards gained passing. Baltimore 135. Dallas 100. Morton was thrown twice for 14 yards total losses. The uh, Cowboy front four did not get to Johnny Unitas or Earl Morton in the first half, but certainly uh, forced them both to hurry several of their throws, resulting in two Dallas interceptions. Baltimore as a team, 5 out of 13 with two interceptions. Morton in the first half, 8 out of 16. In the punting department, just about equal. Ron would be punted six times for a 43-yard average. And uh, Lee, David Lee of Baltimore, three times for an average of 42.7. And the crowd reaction is to the Colts' reappearance on the turf here. Fumble department... Uh, the uh, Cowboys fumbled once and lost one, and uh, so did the Colts. Penalties. The Cowboys seven times for 91 yards. The Colts three times for only 16 yards. We'll review some of the individual uh, stats for you a little bit later. But the Colts, unless they do it about face now, uh, will become the first team to lose the Super Bowl in both leagues. <laughs> <laughs> once or twice, that's right. Well, you've got to wonder, Frank, what the uh, implications will be of that fantastic goal line stand by the Cowboys uh, because Baltimore, uh, Joe Pollock was telling us at the halftime that uh, he was surprised, like we were, I think, that they didn't go for the field goal, which would have at least given them some points on the board and some kind of momentum. But that's always a second-guessing situation. I don't know how many times that uh, a similar situation has arisen, and coaches are always going to be second-guessed on it. Uh, McCafferty and his crew obviously felt they had to tie the ball game to go in at halftime uh, that that would give them a great edge so uh, we will see and uh, also of course the appearance of Earl Morrill has added a new element to this ball game and the irony is just uh, immense with his appearance in the football game because of, of uh, his performance in the previous Super Bowl contest when Baltimore was defeated by the Jets and uh, as you pointed out in the first half he was more or less the go to that ball game 
more or less after he came into the ball game, uh, completed two out of four passes, actually hit his first two for uh, 47 yards. A couple of long gainers, one to Hinton, one to Jefferson, which uh, which put the Colts inside the five-yard line, but of course he couldn't hit on that big fourth down pass from the two, and the Colts tried to push the score across. The Unitas before he left, and indications are, as we look down on the field, we see Morrow warming up and not Unitas, but Morrow will start the second half. Unitas three out of nine for 88 yards. Next year is for the Dallas Cowboys making their reappearance on the field prior to the uh, second half of play. Greg Morton eight out of 16 for an even uh, 100 yards. His long throw was that 41 yarder to, uh, to Bob Hayes. In the fast receiving department, Mackey and Jefferson each caught two, hit and caught one. For the Cowboys, Dan Reed, believe it or not, was the leading pass receiver. Four catches for 41 yards. Thomas caught three, including the seven-yarder for the touchdown. Bob Hayes caught one. And look at these uh, rushing stats here, and you see Norm Boulash with 11 carries and only eight yards. And you can see what a great job the Cowboy defense uh, has done. Nowatsky carried once for seven. Unitas once for four. And for the Cowboys, Garrison five times for 26 yards. Thomas carried 12 times in the first half for a total of 23 yards. We're down in the press box and uh, talking to some of the folks down there about that uh, deflected touchdown pass to Mackey. And uh, the general consensus of opinion was that uh, nobody could tell one way or the other. And uh, uh, the Cowboy people mainly were saying because of the instantaneous reaction by so many Cowboy players from various different angles, you know, they had reason to believe that, that they could have been touched first by a Baltimore player. But if no official saw it, even if it happened that way, of course, they... They couldn't call it. We may have to wait for the developing of the NFL films to determine because I'm certain with the cameras they've got here, they had a super slow motion angle on the thing. And that'll be, by the way, they have changed the uh, official interpretation as to who deflected the pass. We had thought it was Charlie Waters, but uh, they've now gotten word from the Cowboy bench that Mel Renfro was a fellow ruled guilty of having deflected the pass. Not guilty of, but uh, they say that he was the man who deflected it in the Mackey's arms. And, that indeed would explain Mel's rage at uh, the completion of the touchdown pass because it was a highly unusual thing and uh, uh, gave the Colts their only points on the board. We're about ready. Here's Frank. Okay, second half underway. Mike Clark gets the whistle. Here's the boot from left to right. Duncan fields it at the five-yard line for Baltimore. He's back to the 15 and caught at the 20. Fumbles the football. A loose ball at the 30, and the Cowboys have it. Duncan was really cracked. I don't know who recovered it, but the Cowboys recovered the ball at the 30-yard line. Well, it's another rookie, Frank. Uh, Cliff Harris got one fumble earlier. This time it's Charlie Waters. As these two rookie free safeties have been Johnny on the spot. And there's another rookie running off with his arms raised in triumph, Steve Kiner. Uh, the breaks, again, even though Texas uh, Shram said, no, the breaks are even, you've got to think that the breaks are going the Cowboys' way this afternoon. First and 10, Dallas Cowboys from the 31-yard line. Morton pitching out to Dwayne Thomas, wide to the left. Dwayne Nye with the block. Thomas is inside the 25 to the 23 before he is ripped down. So that's a pickup of close to eight yards on that play. It'll be second and two. Well, quite a way to start the uh, second half as the Cowboys come up with another big break. Duncan fumbling the uh, opening kickoff of the second half. Official spotted at the 24-yard line. On a second down, three for the Cowboys from the Baltimore 24. Dallas leading by a score of 13 to 6. Hayes to the left side, Rucker to the right, Morton with the give to Garrison inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Walt Garrison has the first down at the Baltimore 15. May, number 56, making the stop along with Rick Volk of the white-clad Baltimore Colts. And the Cowboys are on the move. First and ten, Dallas seventh first down of the ball game. Hayes to the left side, Rucker to the right, Morton feeding Thomas. Thomas nose down, four to the twelve. Pick up the three yards on that play. Hendricks making the stop along with Billy Ray Smith. Official word now from the Cowboy, uh, rather the Baltimore bench. Johnny United has suffered bruised ribs. He is being x-rayed. They do not know whether the ribs are cracked or broken. And there's another Colt going off the field. We'll see if we can figure out who that is. Ted Hendricks, the uh, linebacker, has uh, gone off the field and is bending over being tended to by the Baltimore team trainers right He's now. He's replaced by Bob Grant. Cowboys with a second, call it seven, from the... 
13-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. Garrison cuts inside the 10-yard line down to the 6. Walt Garrison hitting that hole quickly. That'll set up third down, and the Cowboys will need just two for the first down. They have to reach the four for their first. Frank, that's the second time in this drive that they've uh, taken advantage of Bubba Smith's quickness on that side of the line. They're trapping Smith, letting him come through. The guard is pulling on the play and cutting him off, and Garrison sweeping to his right is then cutting back inside behind the guard's block and uh, going right where Smith had been penetrating. Second Official time they used it successfully. The officials say he was down at the seven-yard line, so call it uh, third down. Two needed for the first down. Thomas on the pitch out, goes wide to the right, cuts inside to the five. He's down to the three-yard line. He has the first down for the Cowboys. Let's see where they mark it. It might be closer to the two. First and goal to go. Officials mark the ball at the two-yard line. It is first and goal to go. Dallas, this drive started at the Colts 31 following the fumble recovery. And Calvin Hill is back in the ball game. I suspect we'll see that full house backfield with the three bruises back there. Hill, along with Thomas and Garrison, all in there. They come up in the eye. Now shift to the full house backfield. First and goal to go from the two. It is Dwayne Thomas. He is to the one. He is no indication given yet. He is right down there at the goal line. Was there a fumble? A fumble at the goal line, and they're saying the Colts recovered. Dave Manders has the football in his hands, and he is most upset. And now Craig Morton is conferring with Norm Shocker. He, too, is giving him words. They're, uh, they're, uh, the Cowboys are pleading that the fumble took place after the tackle had been made. And Manders had the football, apparently had wrestled it away from whoever recovered for Baltimore, and I couldn't see it. The ball is, is no more than seven or eight inches away from the goal line. Earl Morrill is the quarterback. The Colts up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten from their one-yard line following the fumble by Thomas Nowatsky. Gets it out to the three for a couple of yards. Well, that's a tremendous break for Baltimore, Frank, because the Cowboys with another seven would have had a 14-point a lead, and that's uh, the way Baltimore's offense has been going would have been not, not adequate, of course, but uh, you would have felt a lot more comfortable if the Cowboys had pushed it in. Certainly the way the Dallas defense has been playing, that uh, 14 points have looked pretty good. You bet. Now second and eight. Colts from their three-yard line. Nowatsky and Bulash uh, lined up in the end zone as Morrill calls the signals. They give us to Bulash. He's across the five to the six-yard line. Picks up another three. That'll set up third down. Colts will still need a little better than four yards for the first down. Ball is marked just shy of the seven. So call it third and four. Looking down on the Cowboy bench, and Dave Manders is uh, still shaking his head over the call. Of course, it's justified to... Uh, righteousness on the part of the Cowboys. They obviously thought that the, the call was late, but the official was right there. Not much question about that. Hinton to the left side, Jefferson to the right on third and four. Morrow calling the signals. Long count play for the Baltimore Colts to give us to Bullock. He's got the first down. Right up the middle goes Big Bull out to the 14-yard line. And that's a big play for the Baltimore Colts as it gives them a little breathing room. Absolutely. Had they been forced to punt from back at that end, you could count on the Cowboys getting a possession at least inside the 50 or close to midfield, but uh, now they've got three more to push it out even if they can't sustain the drive. Now here's Bulleye shutting out of the ball game for the first time this afternoon. We'll uh, check his substitute for you in a moment. Number 17, Sam Haberlack has joined Tom Nowatsky as the running back from the cold backfield. First and 10 out from the 14. Morrill is back to throw. He's back to the 5. He is looking. He tries to hit Hinton. It is fought for and incomplete. Mel Renfro contesting with Eddie Hinton right in front of Tom Landry at the Cowboy bench at the 35. Tremendous second effort by Mel Renfro because the pass was on target to Hinton right on the sideline and Mel... Uh, after Hinton had made the reception, actually, Mel batted it out of his hands on the way down. Both of them were in the air simultaneous. Nine Wait. minutes left to play. Third quarter, Super Bowl five in Miami. Cowboys 13, Colts 6. Colts second and 10 from their 14. Once again, Hinton to the left side. Jefferson out 10 yards to the right. 
Morrow back to throw. Quick toss over the middle. Haverlock at the 25. Haverlock is almost to the 40-yard line before he's caught from behind by Mel Renfro. First down, Baltimore at the 40 of the Colts. Twenty-five yards on the pass play to Sam Haberlack, who wears number 17. He's a second-year man from Bucknell, 6'2", 195. Jefferson to the right side, hitting to the left. Cole fans setting up a chant of go, go here in the Orange Bowl as Morrow calls the signals. Here's the draw play with the give to Nowatsky. Across the 40 to the 45 to the 46-yard line as Nowatsky picks up six yards. And the Baltimore offense behind uh, Earl Morrill has done a good job moving that ball out from the one-yard line now to the Colts 46. Morrill doing a great job of mixing his plays, too. He's a uh, very varied play selection so far, and he's gotten the Cowboys off balance a couple of times. Morrill, 15-year veteran, 36 years old, played his college football at Michigan State. Second and four, Colts from their 46. Haverlack tries the right side. Stop shy of midfield, Dave Edwards. Over there, so is Charlie Waters, Larry Cole. That'll be a little bit shy of the yardage needed for the first down from appearances. It'll be third down. Colts will need uh, a yard. Bulash comes back into the ballgame. So does the second tight end, Tom Mitchell. Third and one. Colts from their 49. 7-15 left to play in the third quarter. Dallas leading 13-6. Morrow calling the signals. Bulash. It's going to be close. He tried the right side and was hit by a stone wall just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. He needed only a yard, however. And let's see if he got the first down. I believe they're going to mark the point of progress across the midfield stripe, which would indicate, yes, it does. He did get the first down. That's a great drive for Baltimore, their first really sustained effort. They got down, uh, of course, had the first and goal of the latter part of the first half, but uh, they have driven the ball from their own one to the Cowboys 49 with a great mixture of plays from Earl Morrill, and he has really come on and added a brand-new element into this thing because Morrill is playing quite well. Colts pop out of the huddle up to the line of scrimmage. Eddie Hinton goes wide to the left side. Jefferson is flanked to the right. First and ten from the Cowboy 49. Morrow back to throw, being rushed. Sideline throw is incomplete, intended for Roy Jefferson. He was well covered by Herb Adderley at the 35-yard line of the Cowboys. Of course, the Cowboy theory is that uh, your normal touchdown drive will cover 75, 80 yards, and sooner or later they're going to make a big play and stop it. And that's what they're working on right now. Here's a timeout. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Big, thick, cold milkshakes. Chocolate, dark and rich. Sweet, fruity strawberry. Creamy vanilla. Mixed to order, not stored in a freezer. Big, thick, cold milkshakes. That's what you get for driving through a jack-in-the-box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient jack-in-the-box locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Admittedly, the new Chevy Vega isn't the least expensive little car you can buy. But we didn't build Vega just to be an inexpensive little car. We built it to be a good little car, and it is. In fact, we think Vega is the best little car money can buy. It has a big 140 cubic inch overhead cam engine, big 10 inch front disc brakes, foam filled front bucket seats, and side guard beams built into each door. Vega at your Chevrolet dealer. It's a lot more car than you expected it to be. This is KRLD Dallas. Frank Lieber with Vern Lundquist in Miami. 6-11 left to play. Third quarter, Super Bowl five. Colts second and 10 from the Dallas 49. Cowboys have put in what amounts to a prevent defense now. They've uh, inserted Mark Washington along with uh, Tom Stinsick into the lineup. Howley uh, is out of there, so is Dave Edwards. And they've got five defensive backs as Morrow brings the Colts up to the line of scrimmage. Back to throw. Big rush by Lilly. The pass is completed to Bullock at the 44-yard line. He is dropped immediately by Leroy Jordan. 
Lilly almost got the ball that time. Pick up of five yards on the play. And the Cowboys had the uh, double blitz on, both Dave Edwards and Chuck Howley blitzing on the play. Morrow did a great job to get that thing off. He barely got it off in time because Lilly was there. Maximum pressure applied by the Cowboys, and this could be a key down. And of course, every third down is. Bobby Lane's old maxim, uh, not to the contrary, that there's only one down in football. It's become one of the great cliches, but it's uh, becoming more and more mandatory that the Cowboys halt the sustained Baltimore drive. Third down, a little less than five for the first down. Colts from the Cowboys' 44-yard line. Earl Morrow has him up to the line, back to throw, looking, looking, fires it over the middle. Almost intercepted is Leroy Jordan. Had clear setting, had he been able to hang on to the football. Looks like Leroy just took his eyes off the ball. He'll have nightmares about that one for a while. Boy, there was nobody down the near side of the field because uh, the cold offensive line was concentrated around the pocket around Morrill, and Leroy had clear sailing for a good 20 to 25 yards. Colts are going to go for the field goal, which will be a lengthy one. O'Brien will try a 52-yard field goal attempt here with Morrill to hold on fourth and five. The kick is up. It is short of the mark. And down by the Colts at the one-yard line. Now, that's just about as good as any coffin corner punt you could want as uh, one of the Colts, number 54, Tom Good, just threw leisurely down there, and that ball just stopped dead in the one-yard line. And the Cowboys now will have a chance to do what the Colts did a moment ago and start at their one. That's one of the few times, Frank, that I have seen Mel Renfro uh, lose track of what was going on. He was back to return the punt, and he absolutely let it die. He uh, could have gone over, I think, and made the reception on the punt and returned it. A uh, perfectly legal play, but he did not. He chose to let it die there and made no attempt whatsoever, and there was not any coverage downfield on the part of Baltimore on the play. One of the few times you'll see that happen to uh, one of the premier football players in the league. Renfro obviously uh, was gambling that that ball would roll on into the end zone, but it did not. Of course, had it rolled on in, it would have been a touchback, and the Cowboys would have played it from the 20. Notice how that time also the Baltimore defenders uh, made sure that the ball was down at the one. They didn't bat it back and forth into the end zone on the play. Well, we shall see what we shall see now because there's been a difference of uh, an exchange of 98 yards on uh, the last two possessions. Dwayne Thomas's fumble on the Baltimore one when the Cowboys seemed uh, a sure sense to go in and score, and now the dying field goal killed on the Cowboy one, and they've got 99 yards to go, and there's nothing between them and the goal line there. First and 10 as Morton brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Quarterback sneak. He is out to the three-yard line. Just a little breathing room is what the Cowboys would like right now with five minutes left to play in the third quarter, and sitting on that one touchdown lead, 13-6. Second and seven. Ball between the three and the four yard line. Cowboys operating out of the shadows. The left side of the field as we look at it, moving from left to right. Hayes and Rucker break from the huddle, both wide to the right side on the Cowboys flip formation. Ditka, a couple of steps off to the left. Thomas gets a yard trying to left side to the four yard line. That'll set up third down. Dallas still needs a good six for the first down. Well, in a similar situation just about two minutes ago, Earl Morrill connected on the third down play and gave the Colts uh, breathing room. He hit Sam Haberlack. He's running back coming out of the backfield for a big gain and got them out of the danger in their own end. Field position all important here because uh, the Cowboys forced to give up the football from this, uh, you, this end of their field. You can almost count on Baltimore taking over around midfield once again. Big down. Third and six. Cowboys from their own four-yard line. Garrison and Thomas to the setbacks. Rucker off in motion to the left side. Lots of movement before the ball was snapped there as no the play. handoff went to Garrison, and he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. That looked like there was movement. We didn't see a flag at all. And the Cowboys will have to punt it from their four-yard line, which means it would be. He'll be backed right up against that end line. Ron Gardine, who is the cold safety man, is standing in Cowboy territory at the 47-yard line. The short man, Jerry Logan, 
standing on about the Dallas 32. So uh, it would appear that there's just no way that the Colts couldn't come out with good field position here. Whitby boots it out. Nice kick. Near midfield. Gardine at the Dallas 49-yard line. Looking for some place to go. He gets to the 46. And a flag is thrown. D.D. Lewis makes the stop. To, we do have a flipping penalty. And what a tremendous break for the Cowboys. Jack Maitland, a rookie, is going to be called for clipping on Ron East around the 43-yard line, and that'll shove Baltimore way back, and uh, not way back, but at least into their own end of the field. Now, that's one thing, certainly, the Colts didn't want on that particular play because they were almost guaranteed field position inside the, uh, inside the Cowboys' end of the field. But now with the clipping finally, the uh, yardage will be stepped off back to the Baltimore 39-yard line, and the Colts will play it from there. And we notice that John Unitas is warming up again behind the uh, Colts bench. Morrow still in their quarterback. Three minutes left to play. Third period. Score. Cowboys 13, Colts 6. Here's the timeout. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh, boy. There's just nothing to like the you get with the Valentine's Boat. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine. Come on out to Valentine Marine's Super Bowl Boat Show. We've got the game tuned in. It's the biggest all-fired boat show of 1971, featuring the Super Boats of the 70s. Listen to just one of the many super specials you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aeroglass Deep V Walkthrough, 60-horse Johnson Tilt Trailer. A low, low $1,992. That's right, only $1,992. Many other boat show bargains to choose from, but you have to see them to believe them. The 71 fleet is in. Valentine, and we've got just the boat you and your family have been wanting at the price you've been wanting to pay. So whether you're an old salt or just getting your first sea legs, come on out to Valentine Marine Super Bowl Boat Show. Bring the family. We've got free cokes and coffee for everyone. That's Valentine Marine at Harry Hines Field, a circle, and 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open tonight for your convenience. <laughs> Eighty thousand fans looking out at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Not a cloud in the sky. Brilliant sunshine. Weather around seventy degrees. And the Colts have a first down at their thirty-nine yard line. Following that clipping penalty a moment ago, Earl Morrow still in their quarterback sends it and wide to the left side. Morrow calling the signals once again. A long count play. The uh, give us to Nowatsky who goes wide around the right side, and he is upended by Herb Adderley as he tried to turn the corner just about. At the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. You know, Frank, you tend to think of a cornerback's responsibility as being nothing but pass coverage, but uh, they have a tremendous amount of responsibility in forcing the run. And uh, in Adderley and Cornell Green uh, last year, Mel Renfro and Adderley this year, uh, you've got two of the best in the league at recognizing the keys, reading the keys, and coming up to force the run. Adderley did just that uh, just then and uh, forced the no game play. And it's second and nine. Colts from their 40-yard line. Morrow back settling, looking, pumps one, lets it fly long. The watch goes by himself at the 30. He is caught from behind at the 15-yard line. Tom Nowatsky got 10 yards behind everybody, and Morrow just laid it out there for him. Got to be, got to be a mixed-up defensive assignment. Leroy Jordan blitzed on the play. Somebody didn't get the defensive signal because nobody picked Nowatsky up coming out of the backfield. Uh, just one of those situations that occurs because he was all by him most of So the Colts with a big play now have a first down at the Dallas 15-yard line. Morrow sending Hinton and Jefferson both wide to the right side. Nowatsky and Bulak the setback. Earl Morrow calls the line down, barks the signals. The give is to Bullock around the left side. He's inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Edwards, Charlie Waters taking the stop for the Cowboys. Clock ticking away the final minute and 15 seconds of the third quarter. And the Colts are just a dozen or so yards away from tying up this football game. Well, that blocked extra point. Cowboys blocked the first extra point attempt by uh, O'Brien in the first quarter certainly becomes a factor in this game second and seven from the cowboy 12 Colts up to the line of scrimmage morrow takes two steps back 
Run, trying to run it on the quarterback draw. He gets a yard to the 11-yard line. Jethro Pugh got a hold of one leg and just wouldn't let go. And the reinforcements arrived quickly in the person of uh, George Andre and Bob Lilly. So the ball is at the 11-yard line. The Baltimore Colts have a third and six. They have to net the five-yard line for their first down. And so here's a big play. And you've got to believe that Morrow's going to go to the pass. Uh, the Cowboys uh, have uh, had great success contending against the run all afternoon. I would suspect uh, we might look for the tight end. Colts probably won't get this play off. There's only two seconds showing on the clock, and they'll move down to the other end. There's the gun. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, the Cowboys 13, the Colts 6. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. A quarter pound of 100% beef served up as two sizzling patties on a fresh triple deck bun with crisp dill pickles and shredded lettuce, a few loving spoonfuls of secret sauce, and tangy melted cheddar cheese. The new and huge bonus jack hamburger. That's what you get for driving through a Jack in the Box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient jack-in-the-box locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Happy Super Bowl from the Canterbury Shop in North Park. To begin the year 1971, the Canterbury Shop in North Park is displaying its appreciation for the loyal response of the well-dressed men whom we have attired, and for the tasteful women who buy for them. In honor of the Super Bowl, we have trimmed one-third off the prices on world-famous Pierre Cardin lines, and from 20% to 50% off on other famous clothing and accessories. The Canterbury Shop wishes our cowboys the very best today. And a happy Super Bowl to you from Pierre Cardin. Right. Uh, I didn't juice up here. Oh, really? They didn't have the ball that much. That's right. Frank Lieber with Vern Lundquist in Miami. We head into the final period of play. And let's set the stage for you once again. The Baltimore Colts have the football at the Dallas Cowboys 11-yard line. They have a third and six coming up. They trail by seven points, 13 to six. So this has to be a crucial call. Earl Morrill spent the timeout between quarters on the sidelines conferring with uh, Don McCafferty as head coach. Some strange things have happened in this football game. Colts now huddling back at the 20-yard line. Now up to the line of scrimmage led by their center, Bill Curry. Jefferson to the right side. Hitting to the left. Bulash and Nowatsky the setback. Third and six. Morrow back to throw. Looks. Still looking. Fires into the end zone and is intercepted. Chuck Howley intercepted for the touchback. And the Cowboys will take over on the 20. Second interception for veteran linebacker Chuck Howley. Earl Morrow tried to go to Norm Bulash. He was his primary receiver the whole way. And Leroy Jordan had primary coverage on Bulash. He had him uh, step for step. Chuck drifted off another running back. I didn't get exactly, uh, well, it had to be Nowoski who had come out on a sweep. And Chuck drifted back and had the re play read all the way. But Bulash was the primary receiver, and he was more than adequately covered by Leroy Jordan. Cowboys first and 10 to give us to Garrison. He's to the 25. Garrison still on his feet across. 30 yard line out to the 38 and has a first down. Walt Garrison picking up 18 yards on a brilliant run. Breaking several tackles en route. And that makes Walt Garrison the leading rusher for the afternoon. He's got 58 yards and only nine carries. Not bad for a guy with a bad ankle and a chip collarbone. By far the longest run of the day, Frank. The officials mark it at the Dallas 39, and now the Cowboy Rooters set up a go-go chance. First and 10, Cowboys from the 39. Morton back to throw, sideline toss, incomplete. Intended for Bob Hayes, who went high in the air for the ball, along with uh, Jim Duncan, the Colts defensive back. And set up a second and 10. Kind of sure turnovers in the ball game now, I wanted to make note of. Three interceptions now and three fumble recoveries by the Cowboys. Kind of curious, that's uh, Craig Morton's first pass of the second half. He's now eight for 17. 
Uh, has not been throwing perhaps as well as he did last week in San Francisco, but by no means is he throwing as poorly as he did against Detroit in the first playoff game. 14 minutes, 12 seconds left to play in Super Bowl five. Here's Morton back to throw again on second down. Short toss out to Dwayne Thomas at the 40-yard line. Thomas gets up to the 42. Pick up a three yards of the play. That'll set up third and seven for the Dallas Cowboys from the Cowboy 42. And Dan Reed and Mike Ditka check into the lineup. You know, Frank, you're pointing out six turnovers. I think it needs to be said. Uh, the Cowboys offense offensively have not been doing that much because with six turnovers, you certainly would uh, expect to have more than 13 points on the scoreboard at this time. I guess that's not too critical. I don't think so. I think that's a very sound opinion. Third and seven. Another mix-up in the Cowboy backfield, and again, uh, they have to call timeout because they haven't gotten the plays down. Uh, that's uh, very curious, but we've seen it happen three or four occasions this afternoon. And Morton walks over to the Cowboy bench to have a word with head coach Tom Landry. And, of course, that's what happens when the, you use that, uh, that third man to shuttle those plays in there. Something doesn't go right, or he didn't hear something right, or it gets transposed the wrong way, and the, the Cowboys line up in the wrong formation, and rather than blow a big third down play in this case, uh, Morton elected to call timeout and get things straightened out for himself. You know, I, uh, Pettis Norman, uh, as is the case with many professional football players, is not in full possession of all of his teeth. And uh, so Pettis has a bridge. He would <laughs> he would wear a mouth guard uh, throughout the first half of the season. But after the loss to St. Louis, when uh, Tom Landry decided to start shuttling the plays in, Pettis tried it in the Washington game, and Morton couldn't understand him with the mouth guard in. So Pettis, at the risk of losing more of his teeth, is uh, not, no longer playing with a mouthpiece. Only problem is that was Mike Ditka who brought that play in, and I don't think he wears one either. All right. <laughs> Morton has conferred with Landry. He is back in the huddle. 13 minutes, 35 seconds left in Super Bowl V. The Cowboys that far away from their first world championship ever, leaving, leading the Colts by a score of 13 to 6. No scoring whatsoever in the third period. This is the way it stood at halftime. All right, Cowboys up to the line of scrimmage. Morton down under the center. Manders sends Rucker in motion wide to the right side. Craig drops back to throw, being rushed by Hilton. Gets the pass away. Reed has it at the 45-yard line. He's up to the 47, but he is short of the first down by a couple of yards. And the Cowboys will have to punt. And Danny Reeves has had a very busy afternoon. Uh, fifth pass reception for Dan. And again, it's pointing out the obvious, but it's good to see that fellow having a good day because of all he has meant to the Dallas Cowboys. It's a, a subjective thing, of course, but you've got to wonder what his contribution has been uh, in terms of player relations with the coaches this year because uh, he is a player and a coach, of course, and uh, has done a great job. Ron Gardeen, the deep safety, low snap from center, but Whitby gets it away all right. Kick is a little bit short. Fair catch is signaled by Gardeen at the 18-yard line. So the Colts will have a first and 10 from their 18 with 12 minutes and 50 seconds left to play in Super Bowl V. We said some strange things have happened in this ball game. Of course, uh, right at the start of the second half, the Cowboys looked like they had a chance to ice it. They had a first and goal from the two-yard line, and Dwayne Thomas fumbled going in on the one. The Colts then launched a pretty good sustained drive themselves. Wound up uh, getting a field goal down at the one-yard line, and the Cowboys had trouble coming out. It's been back and forth here in the second half. Each team has had at least one serious threat, however. First and ten, Baltimore up to the line of scrimmage from the 18. Morrow pumps it once, back to throw. Long, intended for Jefferson. Jefferson falling down along with Herb Adderley. Right in front of the Cowboy bench. And Ernie Stauntner and a few of his compatriots down on the bench uh, thought that uh, Jefferson... That time was guilty of offensive pass interference by running into Adderley. However, it'll go as uh, just an incompleted forward pass. I mean, one thing is uh, rather obvious. We were wondering about the psychological implications of that touchdown. Uh, the the Cowboys, or rather the Colts, lost the first half. The tremendous goal line stand. It uh, certainly has had no effect on Baltimore. They've kept up a tenacious offense. Yeah, I think it would, have had a greater, it would have had a greater effect had the Cowboys been able to score in that first possession in the right. second half. Which gave the Colts a little steam back. Second and ten. Here's Morrow fumbling the football, pecking it up. 
Now rolling out, looking to throw a pass downfield, which he does over the head of the intended receiver, <laughs> Roy Jefferson. And that was Keystone Cops all over the place. Pass is about 14 yards up above his head. I think there's not much doubt that Morrow said, where is nobody and let me throw it there. He dribbled that ball like a basketball a couple of times. Unfortunately, it bounced right back at him behind the line of scrimmage. Then rolled out to his left and uh, finally decided to just dump it and throw it over the head of everybody concerned. So now it's third and ten for the Colts from their 18. Well, I tell you, as this ball game wears on, you get down now, 12 minutes left to play. you got to start thinking more about that 15 grand per man. Charlie Waters moving up, uh, threatening at least the safety blitz as the coach Morrow calls the signals. Takes an awful long time. Morrow back to throw. Gets the pass away. It is intended for Eddie Hitton. And a flag is thrown on Charlie Waters. And the coach will have a first down at about the 35. Boy, Waters looked like uh, he's going to set the new world record for the high jump. In protesting that pass interference call, first and ten, the officials mark it at the 31-yard line of the Colts. You know, maybe a giveaway, though, Frank. Charlie started protesting before they threw the flag. Uh, I saw him jump a couple of feet in the air, and then the flag came out, so I think he may have known it was awfully close. First and ten, Baltimore Colts up to the line of scrimmage from their 31-yard line. Now it's uh, Cornell Green uh, faking the blitz. As Morrill is back to throw, drills it over the middle. Jefferson has it at the 50-yard line and is dropped at the 47-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Roy Jefferson takes the 24-yard pass from Earl Morrill, and the Colts have a first down at the Dallas 46. Well, the pressure just doesn't ease up, does it? And the clock is all important, 11.45 to go. And, uh, of course, if Baltimore should score, you start thinking playoff. I mean, sudden death. They don't call this one a tie. Morrow brings it up to the line of scrimmage. Jefferson wide to the right side. Hinton is split to the left. Morrow this time going with the draw to Nowatsky. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Leroy Jordan breaking through to uh, bust it up along with Chuck Howley and Larry Cole. Second and ten. Colts from the Dallas 46-yard line. You know, Frank, there has never been a Super Bowl game in the previous four that have been played that has been really that close. And certainly they can't complain about this one not being close, but I don't think this is quite what they had expected because it's been such an unusual ball game. Jefferson to the right side, Hinton to the left. Again, Morrill calls the signals, back to throw, flips the short toss to Haverlack, tries to get away from Adderley and Canton is tripped up after a gain of just two yards. So the ball moves to the 44-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. It is now third and eight for the Baltimore Colts. Ten minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the football game. And we'll have to switch now. Perhaps you heard the PA in the background from the press box. Uh, they're calling the interference on Mel Renfro on that third down pass a while ago in which Charlie Waters protested so vehemently. Here's a big third down play again for the Baltimore Colts. Third and eight from the Dallas 44. Haverlack and Nowatsky the setbacks. Ball is back to throw. The safety blitz is on. The ball is batted in the air. And it is uh, caught by a cold, I believe, or else falls incomplete at the 50-yard line. But there is a flag down. A flag is down in the defensive backfield. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we've got a holding call against Cornell Green down there. And, boy, that'll give Baltimore a brand-new first down on the 33-yard line as uh, to where the flag is. And Cornell is most upset again. Baltimore has life. Defensive holding against Dallas. That means an automatic first down for the Colts. And they're spotting it at the Cowboys 39. So the Colts get a new life. Boy, the Cowboys blitzed everybody in the ballpark that time, and Morrill had that arm up raised, and the ball, the pass went straight up in the air about 15 or 20 feet. That's two penalties that have kept this drive alive. Pass interference and defensive holding. Hinton to the left side. Jefferson to the right. Colts first and 10, Dallas 39. Morrill calls the signals. They give us to Nowatsky up the middle. Nice hole inside the 35. 
down to the 31-yard line. Goes Tom Nowatsky, a pickup of nine yards on that play. Charlie Waters finally made the stop with an assist from uh, Cornell Green. You know, Frank, we haven't been keeping ball control statistics, but uh, certainly in the third and fourth periods, it seems as though it's been eons since the Cowboys had the football. Baltimore uh, has had possession almost uh, the entire time. Colts moving from the 31-yard line of Dallas have a second and one. Here's Morrow giving to Haverlack, who's going to throw it. He's rushed back of the line of scrimmage, gets the pass away, and is caught by Hitton at the 20, Hitton to the 15, fumbles it at the goal line, a big scramble in the end zone. Let's see who got it. It is fumbled out of the end zone. And that will be a touchback, and the Cowboys will take over at the 20-yard line. <laughs> Morrow pins out to Haverlack, who tried to throw the halfback pass. He hit Hitton right across the middle. Hitton went for the goal line. The ball was jarred loose about the 10 and rolled to the goal line. And then was batted around in the end zone and finally went out of the end zone, which, of course, is an automatic touchback. And Dallas will take over at the 20. Well, in an afternoon of goofy plays, friends, that was the goofiest, and it seems to symbolize the way things have gone. Mel Renfro is the guy who made the tackle on Hinton about the five, forcing the fumble. And that, believe it or not, is seven turnovers for the Baltimore Colts. They have fumbled four times, three pass interceptions for the Cowboys, and still, it's only 13 to six. Well, you've got to wonder now, uh, there's a temporary timeout on the field, but the Cow Cowboys have possession of the football. 9-11 remaining on the clock. The running game has not gone that well for Dallas this afternoon, but if they could get any kind of sustained running game going now and maintain control of the football for just five or six minutes, it could be vitally important in chewing up that time and uh, salting away what has been a, an icky victory or icky lead so far. Well, what a goofy play, Frank. I'll tell you one thing, that Cowboy defense could use a little rest because they've been on the field a good part in the second half. Which would be accomplished, of course, by the offense uh, doing just that, controlling the ball for a little bit. Haverlack, when he threw, when he finally threw the football, had two receivers side by side. He had Hinton and Roy Jefferson in the same area. It was so obviously broken patterns on the thing. And, uh, boy, he zinged the ball in there, though. Oh, what a crazy afternoon. That's been like the rest of the year, I guess. <laughs> yeah. In a sense, this has been some kind of strange year. And you talk about, you know, things bouncing right for the Dallas Cowboys, and it certainly happened this afternoon. They can't complain they didn't get their share of the breaks today. You know, when that ball went into the end zone, I kept thinking Cleveland, and I saw Gary Collins going after that thing with Chuck Howley, you'll recall, in the 62 game, uh, covered it in the end zone. And Roy Jefferson this time dove for the ball, and he looked just like Gary Collins, but he didn't get it. Here we go again. Craig Morton on the first play from scrimmage gives to uh, Garrison and moves it out to the 22-yard line. Backed up on the left side of the uh, Colts defensive line. Veteran Billy Ray Smith is in there, so is Bubba Smith. Officials mark it at the 23. Pick up a three yards. Second and seven. Eight minutes, 45 seconds. Left to play in Super Bowl five, and the clock is moving. Cowboys leading 13 to six. Rucker wide to the left side. Hayes flank to the right. Here's Morton back to throw. Pass was intended for Dwayne Thomas, but Thomas had his back to Morton when it came as he was firing out of the backfield. So it goes as an incompleted forward pass. And we'll set up a third and seven. That stops the clock with eight minutes and 36 seconds remaining. Reeves once again checks into the backfield, replacing Dwayne Thomas. Rucker to the left side. Hayes breaks out to the right. Garrison and Reeves, the setbacks. Here's Morton dropping straight back to throw. Gets the pass away. It is almost. It is intercepted. Volk at the 20, 15, 10. Rick Volk is down to the three-yard line. First and goal to go, Baltimore. The 
pass was deflected, and Garrison got his fingertips on it, and that was all. And Rick Moore picked it off at about the 30-yard line, returned it to the three. And the Colts have a first and goal from the Dallas three. Mulai to Nowatsky and the setback behind Earl Morrow. The give is to Nowatsky. He is out of the two. And shoved back. Well, this time Earl Morrow went to his fullback instead of Norm Bulai. You recall in the uh, similar situation with just a couple of minutes to go in the first half. They went with Bulai three times, then tried the pass. They couldn't get in. Morrow went with Nowatsky this time, picked up a yard, and uh, you have a feeling you've seen all this before. It is second and goal to goal from the two. Jefferson wide to the right. The rest of the team in tight. Morrow calls the signal. It is Nowatsky to the goal line. He's over. Nowatsky scores for the Colts to make it 13 to 12 with the extra point try to come. Seven minutes, 35 seconds left to play in Super Bowl V. And Jim O'Brien, the rookie from Cincinnati, has a lot of pressure on him now. He had his first extra point attempt blocked. Morrow will hold. O'Brien will kick if he makes it. It's a tie ball game. Here's the snap. It is down. It is up. It is good. The Colts 13, the Cowboys 13. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh, boy. There's just nothing to start like the follow through you get with the Valentine's Hope. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine, and Valentine's having the biggest boat show blast of 1971, featuring the new and exciting boat full of 70s. During Valentine Marine's Super Bowl boat show, you'll find dozens of tremendous money-saving specials on the greatest names in boating. Here's a typical super special you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot L-glass dry hull, 85-horse Johnson, Dilly Trader, an incredibly low $2,492. That's right, only $24.92. We've got boats of every size and shape, all at boat show prices. But you've got to see them to believe them. The 71 Fleet is in at Valentine Marine, and we've got a boat for every family and every budget. So what are you waiting for? Come on out. We've got the game tuned in. Don't miss the gigantic Super Bowl boat show going on right now at Valentine Marine. Free Cokes and coffee for everyone. Harry Hines via the Circle and 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open tonight for your convenience. <laughs> 7 minutes, 35 seconds left in Super Bowl V. As O'Brien tees up the ball, the Cowboys have Mark Washington and Cliff Harris as the deep men standing on about the five-yard line. Harris uh, shielding his eyes from the sun. There's a little number down the middle. Harris at the 30. Up to the 35-yard line and dropped at that point. Colts didn't want to risk a return, obviously, and they kicked a little number right down the middle about it at about the 35-yard line. When high in the air, Steve Kiner tried to field it, and then Harris took it on the run at about the 20 and returned it to the 35. So the Cowboys will go to the offense. First and 10 from their 35-yard line with 7 minutes, 20 seconds left to play in Super Bowl V. Morton brings them up to the line of scrimmage. The give is to Thomas, or rather to Calvin Hill, who has just come into the ball game, and Hill is dropped after a pickup of one yard by Bubba Smith. Well, Frank, the Cowboys' uh, running game has not been working well this afternoon, and you've got to wonder, they have not moved the football at all in the second half, and momentum certainly now on the side of the Colts, so it would behoove Dallas to at least get a first down out of this thing. Dwayne Thomas is in there with Garrison at the running back, so second down, Morton rolls out to his left, looking for a pass receiver, fires it downfield, Garrison has it and picks up the first down at the 49-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Now the floor of the entire play went to the right side with the exception of Craig Morton, who went to his left and caught Garrison coming out of the backfield. So a first down for the Cowboys with the nose of the football just inside Dallas territory. Clock moving with a little more 
Then six minutes left to play in the ball game. Garrison limps off the field. Claxton Welch replaces him. Boy, this is a tough spot for this young man to be in. First and ten. Cowboys from there, 49. Morton calls the signals. The give is to Thomas, trying to go to his left. Gets a yard. And no more as he is cut down right at midfield. Ray May, who's played a great game at outside linebacker for the Colts, made the tackle. It'll be second, a little more than nine needed for the first down. Knows that the football is now on the Baltimore Colts side of the 50-yard line. High football game, 13 and 13, and we go sudden death if we don't resolve it in regular time. On second and nine, Morton fakes to Thomas, back to throw, has the pass partially deflected as he was decked just as he threw the football by Bubba Smith and Ted Hendricks. It goes as an incompleted forward pass and will set up third and nine. Craig Morton now 11 of 23 for the afternoon. But again, has not had great success hitting his wide receivers. He's been hitting his backs, but that's about it. Bobby Hayes uh, has caught only one pass this afternoon. Reggie Rucker has yet to catch a pass. We had thought that he would be a factor in this ball game. We might look for Rucker on this play. Big play for the Cowboys. Third and nine as they move from midfield. Martin straight back. Trying to get it away. He does to Garrison at the 50. Garrison is to the 45-yard line. Not enough for the first down. They come up about four shy. With fourth down coming up. Frank, it'll be a 52-yard field goal for Mike Clark if they choose to try it. I don't know whether they will. No, they will not. Ron Whitby coming on the field. So the Cowboys will give it up with 4.42 left to play as Ron Gardine drops back to about the 10-yard line and Ron Whitby drops back into punt formation standing on about his 40. Good snap from center. Whitby kicks it away, angling it for the corner, bounces at the 10, rolls to the five-yard line, and gonna be down inside the five by the Cowboys. Great effort by Cliff Harris, who downed it at the five. So the Colts will start from their five-yard line on this drive with 4.15 left to play in the ball game. On a 45 yards by Ron Whitby. Things are getting tenser and tenser. They said this would be a close one, and boy, they were right. I'll tell you that. It couldn't be any closer. The Colts 13, the Cowboys 13. The clock moving, four minutes left to play. Earl Morrow on in place of the injured John Unitas, quarterbacking Baltimore here in the second half. Mulash and Nowatsky, the setbacks. It's Nowatsky cracking off left tackle out to the eight for a pickup of three yards. seven for the first down, moving from there eight. Clock rolling along with three and a half minutes remaining and moving. Jefferson wide to the right side. So is Eddie Hinton. Morrow calls the line down. Falls down as he hands off to Nowatsky, who clears it to the ten up to the middle. So that'll set up third, and the Colts still will need five for the first down. Cowboys sent in D.D. Lewis, uh, linebacker, to replace Dave Edwards in the obvious passing situation. They are not in a prevent defense. This is not a prevent at all. They just uh, simply feel that D.D. perhaps is a bit more range uh, defending against the pass, and uh, they do this often in passing, in obvious passing down. Third and five, and uh, the cliche comes into usage once again. How big is this one? If the Colts don't pick it up here, chances are they'll have to punt and give the Cowboys good field position. Baltimore from its 10. Morrill has him up to the line of scrimmage. On a long count play, he calls the draw. Bullock trying to go outside, gets away from Andre, but it stops at about the line of scrimmage. So call it no gain, and the Colts will be forced to punt with two and a half minutes left to play. Big Bob Lilly had first contact with Bullock, and Bullock broke the tackle, but uh, 
Bob got over and helped on the on the uh, final tackle, and now the Cowboys just 2:11 remaining. 2:09. We're going to get the two-minute warning, perhaps, uh, right after we get this playoff. David Lee will punt from five yards deep in his end zone. Renfro and Hayes standing at the 50. And here's the whistle indicating the two-minute warning to go to both benches. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. A stone ground corn tortilla deep fried and stuffed with meat, Mexican herbs and spices, crisp shredded lettuce, tangy cheddar cheese, and topped off with our middle of the road hot sauce. A terrific taco. That's what you get for driving through a Jack in the Box restaurant. More than two dozen convenient Jack in the Box locations in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Admittedly, the new Chevy Vega isn't the least expensive little car you can buy. But we didn't build Vega just to be an inexpensive little car. We built it to be a good little car, and it is. In fact, we think Vega is the best little car money can buy. It has a big 140 cubic inch overhead cam engine, big 10 inch front disc brakes, foam filled front bucket seats, and side guard beams built into each door. Vega at your Chevrolet dealer. It's a lot more car than you expected it to be. to go once again here at the Super Bowl in Miami with a minute 59 left to play in the ball game, tied at 13 apiece. The Colts fourth and five from their 10. David Lee, their punter, standing five yards deep in the end zone, awaiting the snap from center. Hayes and Renfro at about midfield. The snap, good punt. Hayes at about the 50-yard line makes the catch, and his own momentum carries him out of bounds at the Colts 48. So the Cowboys are in excellent field position to set up a possible last-second field goal, which would win all the marbles for them. With a first down at the Colts 48, all it takes here now is uh, maybe a first down or two to get them in good shape. You think Mike Clark isn't uh, having some own private thoughts of his own about now? Gee, many what pressure. Morton brings him up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten. Hayes and Rucker both wide to the left side. The pitch is to Thomas. Thomas fighting his way, trying to get to the line of scrimmage and doesn't quite make it. As he was almost dropped for a loss of about five yards behind the line by Bubba Smith and by Ted Hendricks, who broke through there. As it was, uh, Thomas did not get back to the line of scrimmage. He reached the Colts 49 for a loss of one. It'll be second and 11. He's got a helicopter circling overhead, and I can't figure out whether he's got official function here or perhaps was watching the game or listening to it and decided to come up and see the finish. I don't know. He just keeps circling over our heads. Rucker goes in motion to the left side on second and ten. Morton back to throw, looking, still looking. A flag is down, and so is Morton as he is dropped by Fred Miller at the 42-yard line. Let's see what the penalty was. It was thrown behind the line, which would indicate holding against the Cowboys. The officials discussing the option with uh, Baltimore, whether to take the uh, loss of the pass play or the penalty. Of course, that would give the Cowboys additional down. That apparently the uh, they're going to take the penalty infraction, get the Cowboys as far away from that goal line as they can. Fifteen yards, marched off against Dallas, who move the ball inside the Cowboys 30-yard line. Norm Schachter, the referee, puts it down at the 27. Holding is the call. And you've got to think, Frank, how crucial that is because uh, not only does it uh, fairly well keep Dallas out of field goal range, but goodness gracious, it certainly would give uh, Baltimore tremendous field position if the Cowboys are forced to punt from that end, uh, that deep in their own end of the territory. The clock shows a minute and nine seconds left to play in the ball game. The Cowboys have second down. They need 34 for the first down from their 27-yard line. Morton rolling out to his right, chased by Bubba Smith, still looking. It's the pass away, it's intercepted. Mike Curtis has it at the 30-yard line. Curtis is down at the 28. So now the 
Drew is on the other foot, and the Colts are in field goal range at the Dallas 28-yard line with 59 seconds left to play. And it is now up to the Cowboy defense. And the pressure now shifts to the Colts field goal kicker, Jim O'Brien, who, keep in mind, is only a rookie. And for the second time, Craig Morton was intercepted on a deflected pass. Uh, he had gone since the Washington game, the 10th game of the season, with only one pass interception. And twice this afternoon, both times coming on deflected passes after he had hit his receiver. What a tremendous race for the Colts because they are close. Uh, I don't know that much about O'Brien's range, but I should think he's fairly adequate from that close in. And you can bet the uh, Colts will play a conservative now trying to keep field position for Jim O'Brien. Why we've seen so many wacky turn of events in this football game. This game has just been out there for the either of these teams to, to take. But uh, for the most part, they've been playing giveaway, particularly here in the second half. Cowboys have had the advantage of four fumbles, three pass interceptions, and still have only been able to put 13 points to the board. So here come the Colts up to the line of scrimmage. 59 seconds left to play in Super Bowl V. First and 10. Nowatsky and Bulash are the setbacks. Earl Morrow, the quarterback, marks the signal, gives to Bulash. He is to the 26-yard line, a pickup of two on the play, and moving the ball out toward the center of the field to give Jim O'Brien, the field goal kicker, the best possible angle. The clock continues to roll, 45 44 seconds left to play. Colts going to let it roll along here and then stop it uh, with just a few seconds remaining for that field goal attempt. This may be their last play before the field goal attempt. Up to the line of scrimmage. Morrill looks over the Cowboy defense. Bulash diving inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. 21 seconds. 20 seconds. The clock rolls along. 15 seconds. Left to play in the ball game. Morrill watching that clock, getting ready to call timeout. 11 seconds, 10 seconds, 9 seconds. Here comes the timeout by Baltimore with 9 seconds. Left to play in the Super Bowl and rookie Jim O'Brien, who this year made out the veteran Lou Michaels for the Baltimore place-kicking job, will be called on for a kick which could amount to $7,500 for each member of his team. That's the difference between $15,000 per man first prize and $7,500 for the runner-up. Now, O'Brien's field goal attempt from, will be from about the 32-yard line. He had a 52-yarder earlier, which was short of the mark. Nine seconds left to play. If he misses this, it is a virtual certainty that will go sudden death for the first time in Super Bowl history. Both teams huddling at the present time. Colts picking up any particles that they see on the uh, poly turf, the artificial turf here at the Orange Bowl. Earl Morrow is the holder. Here we go. Colts come up to the line of scrimmage. Virtually no angle at all for O'Brien. 32-yard field goal attempt. This is for all the marbles. And I'll tell you what, Frank, the tactics are going on. I think Leroy Jordan just called timeout for the Cowboys, and I would suspect that the reason for that is simply to give Jim O'Brien another minute to think about it. It's really become a chess game out there. No, now the Cowboys did call a timeout, but now we're set to go. Marl awaiting the snap from his center. It's up, it's down, the kick is up, it is good! And the Colts have scored with nine seconds left to play and lead the Cowboys 16 to 13 on a 32-yard field goal by Jim O'Brien. And O'Brien is being mobbed. And 
Bob Lilly expressing the frustration of perhaps every Dallas Cowboy and fan as well just threw his helmet from the own from his own 30 to the Baltimore 40. Uh, you can bet the uh, Colts will spin this kickoff to prevent a Cowboy return as the clock now shows just five seconds left to play in Super Bowl V. And O'Brien, the young rookie from Cincinnati, is the man of the hour. As the Colts come from behind, trailing 13 to 6 at halftime, held the Cowboys scoreless in the second half, overcome some of their own mistakes. Earl Morrill has vindicated himself at quarterback. Here's the kickoff, picked up by Steve Kiner at the 40-yard line. He is dropped immediately. There is one second left. The uh, Cowboys immediately call timeout. There will be time for one play. I'm going to ask you, Frank, what do you do when you're 60 yards from the field from the end zone? You've got one play, and it's going to mean $7,500 per man. What do you call? I don't know, but I, I'm looking at Craig Morton, who is uh, walking over to the sidelines and conferring with head coach Tom Landry, and I'm sure they're calling it. Of course, it, it happened... Uh, in a pro football game earlier this season uh, involving the Oakland Raiders and the New York Jets, they won a ball game with a long pass with one second left to play, but uh, you can bet the uh, the Colts are going to have everybody looking for that pass, and uh, it would have to be an impossible task at this, uh, at this point. One second left to play. The Colts 16, the Cowboys 13. And it's been a case of the Cowboys being unable to take advantage of numerous breaks accorded them. And the offense's inability to move the ball in the second half. Here's Morton back to throw. Let's just fly downfield. It is intercepted, intended for Hayes. Gary Logan picks it off. He is run out of bounds. The ball game is over. And the Colts are Super Bowl champions, beating the Cowboys. By a score of 16 to 13 on a field goal of 32 yards with nine seconds left to play by rookie Jim O'Brien. And that's pressure. We'll be back with more from the Super Bowl in Miami in just a moment. Oh boy, there's just nothing a boat like the follow through you get with the Valentine boat. It's Super Bowl Sunday at Valentine Marine. Come on out to Valentine Marine's Super Bowl Boat Show. We've got the game tuned in. It's the biggest all-fired boat show of 1971, featuring the Super Boats of the 70s. Listen to just one of the many Super Specials you'll find today at Valentine. 17-foot Aeroglass Deep V Walkthrough, 60-horse Johnson Tilt Trailer. A low, low $1,992. That's right, only $1,992. Many other boat show bargains to choose from, but you have to see them to believe them. The 71 Fleet is in at Valentine, and we've got just the boat you and your family have been wanting at the price you've been wanting to pay. So whether you're an old salt or just getting your first sea legs, come on out to Valentine Marine Super Bowl Boat Show. Bring the family. We've got free cokes and coffee for everyone. That's Valentine Marine at Harry Hines Vila Circle and 1982 Fort Worth Avenue in Oak Cliff. Open tonight for your convenience. <laughs> Frank Lieber along with Vern Lundquist back at uh, Miami, and it'll be a, kind of a sad homecoming now for the Cowboys tomorrow to lose one this way. 16 to 13, the final score. We might check a few stats in closing, Vern. Brian, let's take a look at Johnny United's statistics. Of course, he went out in the first half with the injury to his ribs, uh, completed only three of nine passes and had a couple picked off. Earl Morrill, who really had a superb day, and you've got to give him all the credit in the world because he was the go to the last Super Bowl appearance for Baltimore. Ended up with 8 of 16 for 199 yards and did a great job of calling plays. Uh, on the ground, uh, the Colts didn't do much. Norm Bulleis carried 18 times for 27 yards. Tom Nowatsky came on in the second half particularly. He was utilized much then with 10 carries for 34 yards. For the Cowboys, Craig Morton had uh, 27 attempts, 12 completions, and he was intercepted three times. Two very crucial. One led to the tying touchdown. Uh, the other led to the field goal from Jim O'Brien with just nine seconds to go. Both times, 
Uh, the interceptions came on deflected passes. The ball was fairly well on target, just a bit high. The pass was deflected and picked off once by Rich Volk, once by Mike Curtis, and that was really the ball game in the second half. Morton with 12 of 27 for 126 yards and three interceptions, the last from Jerry Logan. Uh, Roger Staubach did not play. Let's take a look at the running game, which was not all that much of a factor for the Cowboys today. Baltimore did a great job of stopping the Cowboy offense. Dwayne Thomas, who had 100, uh, in excess of 100 yards in the two previous playoff games, unofficially 19 for 41 this afternoon and uh, didn't get much uh, in the fourth quarter particularly. Walt Garrison playing on a sore ankle at about 75% of capacity. A tremendous afternoon for him and a great tribute to the young Cowboy. 11 carries for 61 yards. He was the leading rusher in the ball game. 102 yards on the ground for uh, the Cowboys, well below what they have established before. They've been going at about a 200 to 250 yard clip, and uh, that, in effect, was uh, the key to the Cowboy lack of success this afternoon because Baltimore's defense did a great job in shutting down the Cowboy offense. Uh, the Cowboy defense, in contrast, just had to spend too much time on the field in the second half. It seemed as though they were there all afternoon. Turnovers counted it. Uh, Frank, the Cowboys, with seven turnovers, four fumble recoveries, three pass interceptions, and yet they were able to put only 13 points on the board, and that indeed uh, speaks volumes. And uh, the six interceptions in the ball game, counting both sides, is a new Super Bowl record. Of course, it's hard to, you know, again, single out any player plays as the turning point of the ball game, but uh, the Cowboys, the start of that second half, recovered the the uh, the kickoff and we're down with a first and goal at the uh, Colts two yard line and fumble the ball the Colts uh, uh, recovered that fumble and for the first time in the ball game really showed that they uh, they could move the football they moved it out there and they moved the ball well and uh, controlled the ball for the remainder of the second half and that uh, perhaps more than anything else uh, was uh, helped turn the ball game around one has to say that uh, Baltimore certainly dominated in the second half the Cowboys never posed an offensive threat. Uh, you're going to wonder about this for a long time. I'm going to come right out and say it. I saw Bob Lilly throw that helmet a good 30 yards in the air, and uh, I just wonder if there might not be some upset feelings on that uh, defensive team because they had to spend an awful long time out of the, out there. And, uh, it had to be a terribly frustrating day for Lilly and Chuck Halley, uh, who played so superbly, Mel Renfro, the guys defensively, uh, who did such a great job. But again, you can't give enough credit to Earl Morrill because, boy, the pressure he was under... They come on like he did, uh, and the iron, the ironical factor of his presence in the game is something that I'm sure will be discussed uh, in post-game uh, analysis for years to come. And uh, certainly Morrill and the Colts vindicated themselves for their Super Bowl loss against the Jets a couple of uh, years ago. Well, that's just about it from down here. We hope you've enjoyed our uh, description for you of Super Bowl V between the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Colts. The final score once again from the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Baltimore Colts 16, the Dallas Cowboys 13. Frank Lieber along with Vern Lundquist saying so long from Miami. Go! Go! Dallas Cowboys! This has been Super Bowl V on KRLD, live and direct from Miami with Frank Lieber and Vern Lundquist. Brought to you by Valentine Marine. Remember, there's more family fun afloat in a Valentine boat. By North Park's Canterbury Shop, featuring Pierre Cardin suits. Chevrolet for 71. You've changed and Chevy's changed. She, your Chevrolet dealer. And by Jack in the Box, with over 26 convenient locations in the greater Dallas-Fort Worth area. The 1971 Super Bowl has been another sports special from KRLD, sports leader for the great Southwest. NBC Monitor News on the Hour, brought to you by General Motors Acceptance Corporation, GMAC, financing for cars, trucks, Frigidaire appliances. Now here is Charles McCord. Super Bowl number five is history, ending on the most climatic note yet seen in Super Bowl playoffs. With seconds to go, the game was decided in favor of the Baltimore Colts, breaking a 13-13 tie on this play, as described on NBC Radio by John Randolph. Nine seconds remaining. Fourth quarter. All right, here we go. Now they're set. Tom Good will stop it. Earl Moore will put it down. Jim O'Brien's field goal attempt will come from the 32. Here it is.
NBC Radio sportscaster Jay Randolph, the final Colts 16, Dallas Cowboys 13, end of Super Bowl 1971. The guerrilla versus government struggle in Jordan is growing more complex. The story from Mark Schleifer in Beirut. The Palestinian guerrilla movement is splitting wide open over the issue of whether or not to cooperate with King Hussein. Popular front guerrilla leader George Habish, whose left-wing group was responsible for the jetliner hijackings last summer, has called for a relentless struggle to overthrow Hussein. Other smaller left-wing guerrilla groups have rallied to this position and have ordered their civilian supporters and the Palestinian militia not to hand in their arms as called for by the latest ceasefire agreement in Jordan. But a leader of the largest and most moderate guerrilla group, Fatah, has denounced Habish as an adventurer and warned that Fatah will use force against other guerrilla groups if that is necessary for preserving the ceasefire with the Jordanian army. Mark Schleifer for NBC News, Beirut. Maine Senator Edmund Muskie is on his way back to Washington following an extensive tour of the Middle East, Russia, and Europe. The Democratic presidential hopeful conferred in Bonn today with leaders of the West German government. Kansas Senator Robert Dole, new GOP national chairman, says the state of the economy is going to be crucial to the Republicans' 1972 campaign hopes. I think the economy can be a very vital issue in 1972 unless uh, we see the economy on the rise and unemployment down. It does threaten our chances in 1972. Senator Dole also said chances are good Congress will approve meaningful campaign spending reforms that will apply to all media. He appeared today on the CBS program Face the Nation. As the war winds down in Vietnam, authoritative sources say the struggle for control of Cambodia's vital Highway 4 has brought about an increase in U.S. involvement in that country. The moves, which include stationing of a U.S. 7th Fleet helicopter carrier in the Gulf of Siam, were made without official announcement. The hour's top story, Super Bowl 1971 has ended on a seconds-to-go field goal by the Baltimore Colts. The final, Colts 16, Dallas Cowboys 13. Charles McCord, NBC News. Listen again on the hour for NBC Monitor News.